happening, weirdos? This is Jake Johnson, who is incredible, hilarious, and brilliant. You're about to hear he has a new movie out on Hulu that is incredible and awesome and hilarious. He wrote it. He directed it. He starred in it. I loved it. It's called Self-Reliance. It's on Hulu. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. He is incredible in it and in this podcast. You are going to love it. I have just a couple tour dates coming up. Uh, I'm going to be at the Irvine Improv for one night. I'm going to be at the Oxnard Improv on Valentine's Day. I also have my monthly Largo shows. If you want to see me at Largo, go to largo-la.com. All of these tour dates are on PeteHolmes.com. Check it out. Love to see weirdos out at shows. It always means so much. And thank you to everybody that came to this month's Largo. It sold out. It was incredible. I'm so glad you guys were there. All right, Jake Johnson, let's get into it. <laughs> I'm pushing drugs on you. This is you right there. Thanks, pal. Um, how long have you been in this place doing this in here? Has this always been the... No, we first recorded... Do you, do you remember Meltdown Comics on Sunset Boulevard? No. There's no real reason you should, unless you went and saw a show there. We used to record it. It was near Sunset in La Brea. Cool. And that's where we did it for the first five, seven, six, seven years. Eight. Seven years? Eight, six years? Six years, and we've been doing it here for four years? Well, we've been 11 years now, I think. Oh, wild. Yeah, it is. And you that's just you just, just started just, one. Uh, you're way ahead of the curve. I am ahead of the curve, but you know, and I don't mean to focus on the neg, yeah. but I do kind of have this feeling of like, you know, getting honest about what I want. I wish more people would discover the show because it's one of the things that I'm most proud of is, yeah, is yeah, the show. Yeah, totally. And it's really hard when it comes to like marketing. The right. first thing people want with marketing is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's like, it's true. Of course. Of course. Apple Vision Pro. It's new. <laughs> yeah, what is of that? Course. It's true. Um, so it's kind of it, hard. It, I see it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Because you have a great library. You've got the content, but you don't have <clears throat> the uh, the uh, new toy element. Yeah. It, it's not shiny. Yes. <clears throat> but it is established. Yes. Well, it also, this whole world, which I'm very new to. <laughs> So even the idea of doing podcasts, I'm still new to. Yeah. Because I came up as an actor in a different time. So You're an actor? Well, I'm trying to be. <laughs> but the idea of it is even the way press was different. So I hated when press started getting short form. I remember my first press tour in New York where I went to BuzzFeed. Yeah. And I was waiting for the interview. And I sat in a room that was all white and there were cameras everywhere. And they said, just tell uh, uh, any story you want. And I said, why? And they go, because we're going to cut it into clips. And I thought, what the fuck does this have yeah. to do with the movie I did? And that story brought more eyes to the movie. And I remember being like, oh, the world is changing and I'm not ready for it. I think about that too. I watch other people's podcasts and I enjoy them. And I see what they're doing to kind of, I think, compete with the instant gratification of scroll yes. scrolling life. Right. I don't know when I became Andy Rooney. I'm 44. We're, we're about 45, the same age. yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I just had somebody, by the way, in their deep fifties say, we're the "They're same about age. your age." Yeah, and see, I was it like, "Happens to me a lot." Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. You, well, look, we're the man. same generation, and I go like, "Come on, come, give me what something." Are you doing? I know I'm not them, yeah. but I don't think I'm you yet. You are not <laughs> me. I'm looking at the like <laughs> yeah, yeah. topography yeah, map yeah, yeah. of your face. We're I've that, seen every smile you've them, ever had. Man, we're that man. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Close. I don't mind. I'll be them when Did I'm you? them. Yeah. But don't induct me into your club now. <laughs> Too soon. But I do feel like an old old fart in the sense that I'm like, you know, people are like, why don't you edit your podcast? Somebody, we, we were we were strategizing. We're like, how do we get more? Oh, okay. And not even just for like the marketing or the success of it, but for like the fun of the game of playing I the like thing. It. Yeah, yeah. I me like too. it. I like it. I'm too. proud of it. I've taken drugs. I hope you have this experience. Yeah. Meaning like heart opening things like MDMA yeah, and yeah. like just been overwhelmed yeah, yeah, that yeah. I share my life yeah, on a yeah, podcast. Fun. And it actually feels nice, meaningful. Yes. So apart from Interest, anything I, yeah. else, I go like, I'm proud that I, I did like, that. Yeah. So I actually, I think I'm coming at it different. Now I'm seeing the be loved too. So I'm feeling the warm in here oh, now. Oh yeah, be loved. But I, I think I'm coming at it differently in that. <laughs> you have a, a thing that I'm says close. be rich. Uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> get, get that gold, boy. Get that gold. No, I love... Uh, I love the game. Get that gold. <laughs> Please go get a sticker that yeah. says "There's get gold that in gold. those hills, boy." That's why you go to California. It's a prospector Fuck. with the itchy. Well, onesie. that's why we all came here. 
Itchy wool onesies is why we're here yeah, and with then, the butt flap. And then you see a hill and you realize there's no more gold in this mountain. And you look over and there's a bunch of fools and somebody's quiet. And yeah. you go, I think those motherfuckers found gold. Is there? <laughs> do you play Red Dead Redemption by any no. chance? You find a guy at one point and he's found gold. He's just yeah. mining for gold. <laughs> and the game is so sophisticated that you're like, if he's here, I bet something There's happens. something great. So you just watch yes. him and he goes, I found gold. And you just shoot him in the face. <laughs> you just shoot him in the face and gold. take it. You know That's how much. And then a guy Amazing. rides into town, yeah. has gold, right. and pretends he found it. Imagine yeah, 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 that yeah. guy. The level, uh, talking That's about our business. <laughs> that is funny. That is our But You sit around, you talk about an idea with a group of people, you pitch it around, they pass. And then a year and a half later, you see a variation of it with other people. And Derek Waters takes your drunken story. <laughs> Just look at one of these. Any one of these Brian, can be I'll your I love you, Derek. I was actually, you stole my shit. No. No, I'm kidding. I know, but I was actually just with him this weekend. I love Derek Waters. <laughs> Me too. I love Derek Waters. I just, I was doing light research because I'm yeah, a fan. Yeah. I didn't yeah, have to yeah, research yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did see that on your Wikipedia yeah. page uh, that you no. drunkenly told Derek Waters it's the story of Otis, Otis Redding. Otis Redding. He had a really funny thing. We just went to San Fran together. We got home yesterday. And Derek and I was the first time we ever flew together. Yes. And he did say as it was taken off, it would be funny just based on the origins of our relationship with Drunk History, because the story is that I believe to be true. The internet has proven me to be a liar. Otis Redding story? Yeah. You were wrong? Well, someone told me when I was growing up in the 90s, so I've told that story 10,000 times. It was one of my, we're all drinking in a bar, this is I my got a good story. My dad's been telling me that Thomas Edison invented the revolving door every time I went in a revolving door. As soon as Google came out, I was like, dad was, dad was wrong. Yeah, and you how many people have you told that to? Well, or not in a lot. This isn't the ex the the usefulness of this example ends there because I don't I don't do <laughs> yeah. that because it used to bug me that my oh, dad would I got say you. that. I got mine was a buddy told me in high school the story is Otis Redding's uh, wife used to write a lot of um, his music with him back in the day she didn't get credit for it so um, but they were really connected they were really tied up they were going to the air working on a song they were going to the airport she drove up to the airplane right before he got on the plane he stopped and he said no matter what happens promise me you'll be good. And she goes like, you're crazy. What do you get on the fucking plane? He goes, just promise me. She goes, I promise he gets what on the- What does he mean you'll be good? Just like be, they were religious, be pure, be good, oh, be okay. like, be like of light. I see. Just like be a good person. It sounds like Earth. don't go two timing me when I'm a ghost. Might've been. I mean, I'm not in his head. I just know the story and it is all a lie. It's hard. It's okay. Yeah. Just, just to know. Spoiler. It's a lie. It's all a lie. Keep going. So, be good. Be good. He gets on the plane, plane crashes. He does. So my buddy told me that when we were having like a ghost story night, when we were like 17 and just smoked weed for the first time, Whoa. we all got tingles. I don't like this. And I was like, that's amazing, man. Yeah. Like that's as good as it gets. So I told it in a lot of bars. Derek and I became friends. We were sitting in our apartment, my apartment, getting drunk. And I told the story and I thought his eyes were going like, wow, <laughs> you know, does this guy have a story? <laughs> you know, and we were just becoming friends. Oh no. And I was like, then in the next day he called me up and he goes, can I come over tonight with a bottle of booze? Anything you want, I'll pay. And we'll get our friend Jeremy Connor to film you telling that Otis Redding story. And I go, why? He went next night. Next day. It was in the morning after. And yeah, I go, yeah, yeah. why? And he goes, because I want to get, uh, I was, we were commercial actors at the time, just started. And he goes, I want to get like real actors to reenact your story and then get someone to play Otis Redding. Oh, so he really did have the idea. And I was like. Of course he did. Yeah. And I was like, no, I can't be drunk. I have a commercial agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he put it together with another one of our friend and put me in the first one. As one of the reenactors. With Mike Sarah, as Mike Sarah was first popping. And that was like my first kind of credit around. Oh, wow. so, so Derek and I are on the plane last night and he goes. Uh, it would be funny if we crashed based on our backstory. <laughs> like it all started. You've only ever told that we he did lied. die in a plane crash, though. He did die. That's in a plane confirmed. Crash. That is confirmed. the part that's not confirmed. Is he said the to his wife, "Be, be good. good" and all that shit. Yeah, I just remember like Bill the butcher. Yes, remember which which part of that story? That when he's dying, he goes, "I'm proud to die yeah. a real American." Good for him. And I'm like. Yeah. And then did he say I pooped my pants? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, what was yeah, he like? Ah, yeah. oh, it's so much diarrhea. Yeah. Like, and what and was you trim that Oscar out. Wilde had a great last one. What was? I'm tired of being the funniest person in the room. Yes, that was. Yes. Do you know who, Good no, Chicago who? Boy? Who? Good Chicago Boy. <laughs> who? I'm putting all this pressure. Johnny on you. Belushi. <laughs> no, I'm tired of being the funniest person in the room. Was the last words of Del Close. It was. Yeah. Huh. And then I'm sure he also said. Yeah. I'm cold. I'm cold. Yeah, that's right. I'm also, can I get more of that cough medicine? Because my chest really hurts. Yeah, 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 exactly. Please give me more morphine. Yeah, it's is hurting. everyone's last words. And, or like, please be quiet. Please be quiet. 
Honestly, please be quiet. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Everybody, please. I get it. I love you. You're my family. All you people are around me. Honestly, shut the fuck up. I'm dying. <laughs> Give me like one minute of silence <laughs> before I leave this fucking earth. I can't breathe. You know what I'm going to want? Huh. Unplug that beep beep part mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't have a beep beep. I know what I'm going to want. <laughs> I've thought about it based off, you know, relatives who I've watched pass. I am going to have a stage where I'm going to say, load me up with drugs. I'm not going to, some people say towards the end of their life. They want to experience it. And they want to be around and be present. Yeah. I'm not. I'm going to say, I love everybody. But experiencing me, experiencing joy, yeah. squeeze my hand as I'm like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughters and my wife will be like, everything okay? Great. <laughs> I want you to remember me like that. Not remember me going like. <laughs> well, I think there's something about Fuck the that. drug experience that is mirroring what, what tends to happen as you deteriorate yes. mentally anyway. Yeah. So it seems natural. Like you're already getting fucked up. But let me enjoy the death. But, but let me enjoy the ride. That's what, yeah, because I'm the totally beauty of drugs. I mean, even the beauty of coffee, the beauty of anything, you're doing the same shit. It just gives you a little kick. Yeah. So while you're literally dying, yeah, that's the time you say no kick, no kick, pass. Buddy, you've been kicking all day. <laughs> yes. That's the whole drug conversation. Like yeah. we all are doing a lot of different drugs. Yeah. Even affirmation is a drug. Yes. Uh, Gratitude's a drug in LA. Gratitude. That's funny. I was just thinking about yes. that. I'm trying to get a little bit more serious about my uh, gratitude you because are. it really works. I'm going the other direction. What do you mean? In I want, in, I'm, he's going in gratitude. I want less gratitude. Why is everyone being grateful? <laughs> There's so much to complain about. <laughs> you want to know why, going back, what I like about having less gratitude? Fewer gratitude is what it is, but yeah, go on. I'll, I'll stick with less. <laughs> is it makes you grind. It makes gratitude? you work. No, not having gratitude. Well, you're talking about drive. No, I'm talking about gratitude. If you look at a situation, you go, how's everything? It's like, it's great. I have this. I have this. I'm able to do this. It's amazing. Or if you go, the crowd's not big enough. The material's not great enough. And I don't have anything. Interesting. Then you go, well, I got to make the material better. I got to get the crowd bigger. And I got to make this nicer. But right. if you have gratitude, I do start feeling complacent. I feel happy. And I go like... Life is really amazing. And then people with a lot of gratitude will justify anything. They'll go like, I have so much gratitude. I go, why? They go, I'm breathing. Such a low bar. <laughs> I'm here. You guys, we're all together. It's great. My buddy, Eric Edelstein, my favorite guy on planet Earth, uh, who's not in my family. We, uh, he's a Mr. Gratitude. We were going to go watch the football game yesterday in his hotel room. Uh, we didn't want to go to a bar. We wanted a quiet. Derek's a Ravens fan. We got like some snacks and a couple beers. It was great. We're going up to the room. While we got to his room, the maid was in his hotel room. Bad luck. Yeah. He goes, it's perfect. And I go, how in fuck could be this be perfect? And he's like, well, the room's going to be clean. I go, no, perfect is as we're walking up, she's, she's walking leaving. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his gratitude goes right to, this is as good as it gets, brother. And I go, standing in a hallway with beers getting warmer, a bag of chips is not it's the worst timing the virtues of ingratitude <laughs> yes. well i'm with you i i meaning i can understand what you're saying yeah. dissatisfaction is a really powerful thing yes and it's fun well yeah complaining you mean no working having that feeling of like well, do you remember there's a line in funny people where he says uh, adam sandler's character says to seth rogan's character who's starting out yeah and he's like, I'm broke. And yeah. Sandler goes, That's good. It'll make you work hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I so I know what you're talking yes. about. Yes. I am gonna I'm gonna challenge you. Please. Though. That's I want the fun you to of know. this. I want you to know. Let's get weird. No, it's coming. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish your point. But no, you go. I want to get challenged. Uh, is it possible, yes. Jake, that you can have gratitude yeah. and in that state of gratitude, yeah. which we could also call like an open, satisfied state, you can ask yourself, what do I want? Yeah. How do I want to feel? Yeah. Why do I want it? Yeah. And how can I get it? Those three questions. I think that's nice. And because then aren't you running on like a, just a higher octane fuel? Same thing. Right. Desperation and fear can make me go, and don't get me wrong, sometimes yeah. I get in a panic yes. and I have to book guests, I have yeah, to yeah. book shows, I, grind, I write grind, that script. Grind. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think, I'm agreeing that that works. Yes. Isn't it possibly better to stop and just go, I don't want, like I'm trying to write this movie. I've been trying to write this movie for a long time. I have a draft of it, yes. but I'm still, I, there's more work to yes. be done. 
when I go, I have to sit down and do those rewrites. I don't do it. But if I can stop and focus on why I want to write the movie, right, and what I'll feel when I finish the movie, that'll while get I'm you to do the it. Movie, that's a cleaner. Like what we have to do gives me paralysis. Hmm. Why I want to do what I have to do will make me start doing the things. I think that's interesting. I have. Is a- that as close as we're going to get to you saying no? You are correct, sir. I'm <laughs> <laughs> tipping your hat. Well done. Podcast over. You won. <laughs> what if that's what I wanted? I love it. I don't want. You just want to win little debates. I you don't. want the other person to go like, and I'm not saying you do, but you just want the other person to go. That's right. Isn't it embarrassing though? I do want to go back to yeah. your thoughts on that theory. It is embarrassing. You ever get a real good look at what you want and you're embarrassed? And if yeah. you are honest, wouldn't I be great if you started crying? <laughs> and, we're, and, and we're like, you've changed my wow, life today. holy shit. I mean, no, so here's what I feel about ahead. gratitude because you bring up interesting points and it's stuff I've actually thought about a lot. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty good at compartmentalizing. So family and life, I do have gratitude. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about the outside house, places that mean some, all that stuff. I have a lot of, I will, every once in a while, I'll be like, wow, like this part is great. Yeah. When I have had moments where I have gratitude towards my job and I go, a fucking chubby kid with my nose from a suburb of Chicago got to live my childhood dream, Love that which nose. was just to be on TV. I got to talk more about the nose, but yeah. Great nose. Mm, what are you talking about? Who t- who hurt you? A lot of people. Who hurt you with that nose? <laughs> but in Evanston? Uh, but it was a pretty progressive, lovely It's a beautiful place. town. Beautiful town. They're calling you what? No, I'm just kidding. Let's, <laughs> let's, not, let's not relive it. Let's not relive it. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. This goes to color bars. Yeah. yeah um, Keep going. But what I'll have is when I have those moments where I'll go like, oh, I hit all those bars that I wanted to hit. Yes. The stuff that when I was at improv theaters and sketch and writing my ass off and having day jobs and grinding... There was a bar, and when I hit it and I feel gratitude, my shoulders come down. Yes. I feel the desire to smoke more pot. Yes. I have days where I'll go like, but truly. Yes. Like, I I smoked about once in the last two years because I got the grind back. When I'm feeling really good, the kids go to school, one hit with coffee, a slow workout. What a wonderful day. (laughs) A lunch where you go, what is this restaurant? What do you serve? And I go... Some place in Silver Lake where I'm like, well, this is as hip of a place as I've ever been. A smoothie with a weird salad. And you can also fry the chicken, but you're using an oil that's not even bad for me. And sweet potato fries. And I start going in, my friends call them wavy gravy. Because I start going in a mode of like, life is good. And if I'm sick and I'm going to die, leaning into wavy gravy. Yeah. But if we're gold miners and we're prospectors and there's gold in these hills... Then the idea is, I don't want to go like, I got a little basket. And when I did that weird shift thing, there was a little gold. I, wanna, I like this feeling of like, live like you're, fu- when you're working, live like you're broke. Live like you want it so bad. Live like you haven't done anything. You're just starting. Because for me, if I go like, well, what do I really want to do? I think the hobby is creation. Yeah. And the hobby is some. So for me, podcast, when I finally got into it, when Gareth pitched me this idea, I said no to him for a long time. And then we, I started seeing it more and I was like, oh, you could have a direct link to audience. You can have like a highly produced show. You could make a lot of them. And then you can start trans, you can start passing on other jobs. So if Hollywood comes calling with one of their like bullshit low offers yeah. that you go like, what is the offer? And they go, well, this isn't a money deal, but you're with great people. Yeah. yeah and I yeah. go like, well, there's great people everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so- some 24-year-old AD is going to make my schedule. I have to show up five hours before we shoot to try on a pair of jeans that are going to look like all the pants I've ever worn. You're talking, I just wrapped a movie yesterday. That whole game. Yeah. And then you go, there's no money. And then when it's profitable, the streamer decides when they pay you. They decide what your equity cut is. And your big thing is to say like, well, I got to do this. Gratitude tells me, wonderful. These people I've been are my heroes are in the same room as me. A fucking grinder goes like, for this fucking money that's commissioned and taxed. Yeah. Fucking pass. Yeah. There's gold in that hill. <laughs> There's gold in a different hill. And I'm going over there. And then you see new people. I love them studying how they're doing it, getting really into it, and pretending I need this to eat. And that's what drives me. Because if I go, what do I really want to do? I don't know. 
Yeah. But if I go, this is the only way I can quote unquote feed my family. Yeah. Well, I'm going to fucking grind my ass off. And the grind is really what I love. Well, that's, that's what I, okay. So I think there's a yeah. very interesting area here. And I think there's a little bit of paradox, meaning yes. you sitting at Cafe Gratitude. I, I don't know where you were. <laughs> but, I mean, well, you like, have chicken. There's a lot of places like Cafe yeah. Gratitude. But you're having a smoothie and your nice salad yes. and, and you're in wavy gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that Wearing is, Crocs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Shorts. I saw the cargo shorts before you said it. <laughs> you got to let those- And they're awesome. Red Crocs shine. Yeah, agreed. And you go like, <laughs> I got so many different things in these pockets. <laughs> And I, and they work. I can use them all at some point. And they're socks, but you're not using those yeah. socks. <laughs> Let them breathe. Well, who cares? I might. The Swiss cheese kind. <laughs> yeah. You might. You might on I a might. plane. Yeah, you might roll them on on a plane. Not. Remember when planes used to give you socks? Yes. Well, I they still, they still they do. still do. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen socks in a while. Yeah. If you if you do the overnight in the oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, capsules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Overnight. The overnight. All overnight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're going a, over the pond. So Wavy Gravy, you and I agree, yeah. is a wonderful place. Agreed. So fun. Can I say, though, I'm going to jump to the third point. Please. That wavy, your ability to Wavy Gravy is informed by, I, I think really? about this all the yeah. time. You don't want to do nothing. Yes. You want to do nothing after you did something. Yes. Briefly. And, right. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you want the next thing coming. No, I, I hear that. Yeah. And that, that's one of the weird things that I don't think enough people explain. Yeah. We want growth. Yes. We want challenge. Yeah. We want something that's a little bit scary. Yep. Uh, and and then you get this great. But you also you also want comfort in that. So you want like, comfort. Yes. It's scary, but you're like, but the, my co-stars are literal friends. Yeah. Or the director and I are. You're we out. work together forever. So this person and I are a team. But this whole thing is scary. But I think we can do it. You're nailing it. Yeah. Because I just saw uh, Tony Robbins talking about the six needs, and one yeah. is certainty. Yeah. So uh, my friends will be yes. there. Yes uncertainty we'll see what I, happens. Just, I watched your movie last night it's yeah. wonderful and there are scenes not easy scenes yes that's right great scenes Thanks. great Thanks. scenes <laughs> didn't like the movie no, i'm just kidding i'm kidding <laughs> hey man love, and love, that's love. okay too because i got a podcast to sell but if you don't like the podcast i got a movie kid and if you don't like that i got cargo shorts <laughs> i got shoes you got i got a car full of stuff pete <laughs> you got so many hills <laughs> for fine golden. No, I love the movie. Thank you. Yeah. Watched it last night because you I couldn't but, watch but it. But the Canada. uncertainty was it was so scary doing it. Okay. Everything about it scared me. And then growth. Yes. Growth is one of them. Yeah. Uh giving, yeah. giving back. Yeah. So when you're talking about these projects, you're you're hitting all of them. Yeah. I'm forgetting a couple of yeah, them. Yeah. But the so mix of certainty. But Tony. Ex <laughs> that's why we need him. <laughs> that's why I'll we help you. Yeah, that's why we pay his ass. That's why we pay you him. You don't so pay him because you remember it all. You go, go to the seminar and go, I know what you're going to say. You go, I think I got 85%, and I'll give you the 6,500 for the remaining 15%. That is so right on. <laughs> but you're saying, I'm, I'm just hearing a lot of wisdom here. It's like, you could wavy gravy. Yes. I think about this all the time. It's like, why don't I sell my house? Yeah. And why don't we move, move someplace far that you can get a mansion in the middle of fucking nowhere? And just kind of live simply. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell me. What happens to people mostly when they retire? Dead? They deteriorate and they die. Yeah. Certain people find an unthinkably good hobby and they weird out, <laughs> right? Where you're like, that guy lived for 12 years after, why? He built a boat of toothpicks in his garage, right? And you go like, great. And that was the thing that they woke up and they were doing. Like that guy that built the, he built something out of rocks? There's a Little bunch, tiny rocks? Yeah, a bunch of weirdos find some. And if you do that, great. Yeah. But I realized during the pandemic when everything shut down. The pandemic. Ooh, we're getting hot. Let's take some alpha brain and talk this out. <laughs> Let's get into it. But I realized everything shut down in terms of the business. Yeah. And I felt, I had a call with an executive at Apple because I had a pilot there. And they said, I was like, is this over? And they go, to be honest, we don't know. No matter what, we're going to make something. And he goes, and here's how it could end up. We could end up sending equipment to certain actors with stands like this, and you could shoot your singles behind certain backdrops, and then editors could put it all together. And that I was went, one of the plans? Yeah, they were like, this was pre-vaccine when we didn't know. Yeah. They're like, but we will be making entertainment. And I was up near Yosemite. We were up by uh, my in-law's cabin with my wife and my kids, and I honestly got emotional, and I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's not why I like this game. 
You're just standing in front of a green screen in your being house. A, being a, like, I don't like it for the individual aspect of it. I don't want to be alone in a room. Yeah. I'm not doing, I don't, I don't care that much about the final thing. I don't care that much about. It's the process. It's the process. And having something to do. And, and be, and caring about it so much. And then when it comes out, I'm not one of those guys being like, <laughs> I went to nine theaters in a night and snuck in. Why? I wanted to watch everybody cheer when my name came on the screen. That part doesn't hit me. Once I'm done, Stop it now belongs it. to them. Who said that? <laughs> just name names. I don't have anybody in specific. I'm just kidding. But that whole thing, I don't really care about. Yeah, no, I the get it. The pandemic hit, and I was like, oh, I'm getting more depressed than I have. I'm like, this is back to like 16-year-old depression. Mm. Where I was like, well, who the fuck am I? What is this thing? So I literally like built a cabin in my backyard because I needed to like every day be excited Do about something. something. Yeah. When I was done, feel like, oh, I'm tired. I'm accomplished. So then I could like sit at dinner mm. and my kids, I could like pull them in and be like, hold that, be part of this. At night when I didn't know how to do the next thing, watch YouTube videos to learn. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I love- I think that's one of the other ones is growth. Yes. Learn yeah. a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like put yourself in a spot where you're behind everybody else and try to catch up. Yeah. That is so fun. It's like life. Yes. yes. It's weird, that, but we are just wired to release certain feel-good chemicals and yes. also just long-standing positive states right. after certain, I don't, I don't yeah. even want to say benchmarks, yes. but you were like, I need a project. If we are if we go back to us at the beginning, I feel like the gratitude movement says we were all meant to sit in a big circle with great hippie clothes on and tell each other how much we love each other and beat on a drum and go, hmm, and feel a vibration of peace and love and kindness. Yeah. I feel like we were uh, brought in this thing to chase an animal and eat and bring it back and have people and my, yourself eat and feel really good when everyone's eating yeah. and go like... They're eating because like the well, eight of us did this. Yeah. Contribution, And yeah. then somebody else does a great thing with that meat and someone else does something. And then when you go to sleep, you're like, hey, you did a great thing to help me sleep. Yeah. And they go, yeah, I know. I feel great about myself now. Yeah. And then everything works. And then as soon as the food starts going out, you're back to getting something else. Well, that goes back to why I hope you're enjoying doing your podcast yes. and my MDMA experience is yeah. you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it moving. I'm yes. bringing a different kind of animal back. Exactly. To the right. That's yeah. exactly. And what, and for me, the real fun of it is so like for ours, I like the idea of going highly produced. Yeah. And I was like, I like the idea of editing it the way I edited the movie. So we mm. would cut out like seven seconds at places. Mm. And our producer, Kevin's like, is there a lot of notes? And I'm like, I know, but it's really fun. And then like finding the type of calls. Cause we have a call in show and like, I don't want to get sincere. I don't want a problem that it's like, I'm a little depressed. Go to a therapist. Mm. I want something really dumb, but really important to you. So, you know, when all of a sudden someone calls up and goes, I bought a pet tarantula when I was 17. I moved out at 18 to college. My mother takes Ambien and now buys pet tarantulas. And we go, how many does she have? And she goes, no joke, 25. And we say, send a photo. And there's a photo of 25 tarantulas in this woman's home in Florida. I'm like, that's a perfect call for us. It's really dumb, <laughs> but like really serious. Wait, when she's on Ambien? She takes Ambien at night, probably then, misses her daughter, and then goes online and buys a pet tarantula. And at this point, she's got 25 pet tarantulas. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, but going back to what we're talking about, not just this story. But, what was your solution? Um, <laughs> you yeah. got to listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't fully remember. I know we were, Derek was on that one with us. We were pitching a lot. Probably eventually it was talk to your mom. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, find tarantula rescues or somebody who's going to take the tarantulas and bring that up as an option to mom. So you're not challenging her, but you go like, 25 is a lot of tarantulas. What's a number that you feel comfortable with? Is it seven tarantulas? What's a number that, where, what's a normal number of tarantulas? Nine? And make mom say that when she's not on Ambien. And then if she goes, she'll admit, like, I got too many tarantulas. Then you go, if we're at nine, you go, I, I found a situation. A guy's coming with a truck. He's taking 15 of them. Or whatever that number is. TMT. TMT. Too many tarantulas. That's right. That's a shirt. <laughs> Teenage Mutant. No, no. Uh, but while we're doing it and we're grinding on it and we're building the show and we're figuring out what the tone is and all of a sudden we're trying and then a new guest comes in or somebody comes onto ours, Andrew Santino, and he and I did his, and then he calls me up and he was like, get into video, buddy. And I was like, but we're, we're in friends. And he's like, this is good, but the Zoom's not working. And I was like, this is such great advice, man. And now we're in a studio with Ken. And I'm like, it's just a fun way to go like, this is a whole new game. 
And then UTA sends an email about a guest star on a hot show after a big thing. And I'm like, pass. What's happening, weirdos? This episode is brought to us by our friends at The Perfect Gene. Of course, I'm wearing them right now because I'm always wearing them. The Perfect Gene are the best constructed, best looking pair of pants I've ever owned. All of my jeans, all of my khakis are made by The Perfect Gene. Why? They look incredible. I've worn them to premieres, I've worn them on late night shows, but they're so comfortable you could sleep in them. They have a stretchy little secret. They're made with 2% spandex and 2.5% rayon, which means they stretch. Why are we out there wearing hard, unforgiving pants? Get the perfect jean. They're super soft, got just the right amount of stretch, they're like PJs, you could sleep in them, but they look incredible and they're really, really well made. I've had some pairs for years, I don't have to replace them. They got great craftsmanship, so liberate your lower limbs with the one and only Perfect Gene. Whether you got lemons or lentils, a three leaf clover, or a big old honking eggplant, the Perfect Gene has you covered. Go to www.theperfectgene.nyc, theperfectjean.nyc, and use code WEIRDO for 20% off. They also got great t-shirts. They got lots of great stuff. Trust me, check it out. I'm also super excited. I'm here in LA doing a show tonight and before I left, I was sure to bring my first person supplements. First person have made supplements that have absolutely changed my life and Val's life. And I'm so excited to tell you about Golden Hour. First person designs precision targeted supplements made with functional mushrooms that aim to stimulate the body's natural production of specific neurotransmitters that trigger activities like energy, mood, and sleep. What does that mean? It means take Golden Hour and it helps your body naturally boost its oxytocin. Well, oxytocin is so huge, it helps me get into a sense of joy, connection, and relaxed presence. I noticed the difference the first time I took it, Val did too, without 15 minutes the effect has built over time and the more I use it, it keeps getting better at helping me mitigate stress and boost excuse me, the mind-body connection. I take all three of their supplements. I stack it with Sunbeam, which supports the body's natural production of dopamine, the motivating chemical, when I need to sit down and work to maximize productivity and creativity by activating the brain's motivation and reward system. And at night, I take Moonlight, which uh, boost GABA, the neurotransmitter that helps you relax the central nervous system, fall asleep faster, and stay deep asleep. It's incredible, made with 100% grain-free organic mushrooms, as well as highly curated blend of nutraceuticals. It's a game changer. Start improving your brain health and cognition with First Person. Get 20% off your first order by going to getfirstperson.com and use code WEIRD. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All right, back to Jake. But five years ago, I have to say yes. Yeah. Even though I like the show and everyone's cool because you go, well, the game tells me I have to stay in it. Yeah. But I think this system is taking advantage of people, not the creatives. Yeah. And I go, oh, because of this new thing, I it's get to now, power back. I get to say no. So I have gratitude for that. But while I'm in it, you shouldn't have it. I do have it. You get rid of it. You're going to become complacent. I don't have any gratitude for it anymore. You're right. I'm a rat with nothing and I need cheese to eat. So I'm yeah. just so with you. Right. And it is sort of a shame. We could go down that path. Maybe it's the prospector in the gold and somebody shoots you and takes the gold and yes. moves it to town. There is something pure about coming back. Th this podcast, I didn't even know when I started what it would become, but talk about the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Kept, kept us uh, alive. Yes. And then... And creatively alive. And creatively alive. Yeah, forget... Fresh, dude. Fresh, something to do. Hunting My an wife animal. and I do the Friday episode, so we Fun. have this like built-in... Oh. Date. It's become, you have a built-in date, date. But better than a date. Yeah, yeah, you're Jake, right. Jake, I'd, li I'd like to think if you and I had coffee, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. be talking like this, and maybe we would. I agree. Maybe yeah. we yeah. would. It's but, heightened. But it's hiding with the yes. microphones. Everybody's heard me say this a million times. Yeah, it's nice. But there is something strange about this business. You mentioned the commission and the taxing. Having just d done a movie, yeah. I literally came home yesterday. Right. It was one of the happiest. I, I was just telling Katie, my co-star, Judy Greer, is she's an actress. Yeah, I'm, I'm a comedian yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who acts. She's I'm great. An actor. She's a killer. She's wonderful. Agreed. Killer. And she just had a different 
approach to it. Like she was booking her next thing. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I was like, I have five months off. And I, I, I can't, I can't yeah, yeah. wait <laughs> to be off. I can't yeah, yeah. wait. I think I would say no. Yeah. If some, in fact, I did say yes. no to a couple things. My manager, not to, this is a brag. I'm just going to own yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. My manager was like, you have this hiatus. You could fly to this thing and shoot it and then fly back. And I'm like, what are you nuts? Yeah. Like, no. Pass. But some people. Agreed. I'm not saying this is Judy 100%, but yeah. she was better at sinking into it yeah. and doing it. And you mentioned being in the trailer for five hours. The number of times, I want to put this to you. Please. When I'm with my babies, yeah. my wife and my daughter, and and I love it, it's, that's my life. Yeah. And every once in a while, you're just like, God damn, it would be nice yeah. to just relax and just have some quiet, let's say. Then I get to a movie and I have a day of yeah. quiet. I'm like, this is dope. Then the next day I'm like, this isn't so dope. Yeah. And then something happens. I'm on, I'm in my trailer. I have my book. Yeah. I have things I could do. I'm yeah. one of those people. I can entertain myself. I like doing breath work. I like doing sure. all sorts of different things. I don't do any of them. Right. I'm in there fucking flipping around YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I could watch a good movie. Agreed. I don't even watch <laughs> yeah, a good yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. You're I'm, on the you're on the Instagram algorithm. You're I'm just, just seeing what's being sold to you. Clockwork yes, orange. Just go. I'm completely orange. Yeah. But it's because my will there's something about the uncertainty of being in a room yeah. they could knock at any moment well, you're not in charge you're not in charge if i knew i had the whole day you're a goddamn animal in the circus and then when somebody knocks it's time to perform and you go and you go and you go and but you're and being paid something to. about knowing that the knock yeah. is coming keeps me from doing well, anything also because you have to even if you know the lines every 20 minutes you go do i know you look at them again and then yeah. you go how are we shooting this and then you go you open the door and you go to the base camp, eighty, and you go, "What time are you thinking?" And they go, "They went really slow today." <laughs> and you go, like this, oh, so, what, "So what do you think?" Probably eleven. And you go, "Well, it's eight. You called me at seven. I wonder why you did that." And then you go, "Don't be an asshole. You're just a visitor for the day, so have a good attitude." You go, that "Sounds good." Then you go back in there and you go, "Well, they're going slow." Then you're looking at it. Then you're thinking. So you're not in your own space. You're also not That's the creator. That's exactly what it is. So, you're not in your but own. But also, space. we are not so. I, I'm so, I, I don't view myself as an actor, but I'm not a stand-up. So that was been the that's been the big kind of catch with me is I never I loved actors. Like I I had two loves. I loved writers, like playwright, like writer writers. Yeah. And then I loved actors like the Bill Murrays of the world or the Vince Vaughns when they were like like that type of comedic so actor. When they were funny? What's that? Did you say when they were funny? When I was younger I, and they were coming up. I could do that. <laughs> but the swingers, Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I loved it. Skinny Vaughn. Skinny Vaughn. I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, look, if there he, was a skinny Vaughn, but I'll tell you what, he's e still trim. Even big, but Vaughn, there was young, I know, young but Vaughn. even big Vaughn, I can guarantee it. You get in a two shot with him or a cross cover to seed that he likes the material. You're, that motherfucker is going to let it rip you're in smoked. a way where you're like, no, no, wonderful. No, no. I, I completely it, agree. It's There's, like you watch Mike Tyson every once in a while. He'll like throw, you'll see him like at his age yeah. and he'll be in like a gym training and he'll like hit the heavy bag. And he's like cracking jokes, smoking a joint. And you're like, yeah, Mike's just a guy. Yeah. And then he throws those on and you're like, no, that's Mike Tyson. I agree. And I love, I, I love agree. that. It's like in your movie, you'd say Wayne Brady, who yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 He's <laughs> just made of talent. Yeah, he is. It's like everybody got agree. like a little dollop of he's talent. Got a lot. Wayne Brady just is talent yeah. and they sculpted a man. Because he it. does a bunch of different stuff. He's I, a triple threat. He's that guy. I agree. But and I think Vinny Vaughn. He is. I feel a little bad for shaming. I wasn't yeah, trying yeah. to shame him. I'm just saying there's Swingers Vaughn, which is like, I, I, a, a it, it's a, a young, uh, slick yeah. Vaughn. He's an animal. Animal. Yes. But I bet he, I know he, I know he still yes. has it. But I, I felt like when I was coming up, I was like, well, that was the goal. And then I started working and getting jobs. And so I came up doing sketch, writing my own stuff, moving around, similar to what podcasting is of like creating little things. Yeah. And then I started getting cast and stuff. And I did a movie that Max Winkler directed called Ceremony with Lee Pace. Lee Pace is an actor. Yeah. And a fucking good one. And it was the first time where, you know, when you're in your 20s and you have so much ego and you really think like you could do everything. Yeah. I was the first time I was like, oh my God, I can never do what that motherfucker does. Yeah. And it was the first time I didn't hate him for it. I loved him for it. Oh, wow. I was like. You were humbled. I was so. In, a, in the good I way. was so impressed. Yeah, yeah. He did a scene where he's walking over a hill and he's got this big monologue and we're all down here. And it's like a page and a half. And I thought like, get coverage because nobody will remember all those lines. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be some stumbling. That's what I, by the way, none of that in your movie. Yeah. I'm looking for those piece together performances. <laughs> yeah. Nothing makes me angrier. Yeah, agreed. Where you see- I've also been in yeah. the edit and I've built someone's performance. Yes, of course. Me too. And then they're like celebrated and I'm like- Yeah. We saved your ass. We saved- You never gave yeah. me- a, So in terms of directing, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I love actors acting. So I love two shots. I love cross coverage and I like using entire takes. Yeah. I don't want to have to save you. But so Lee Pace comes out. After his first take, I was in the scene with Angarano and uh, all these other actors who were great. And we were all like, fucking A, man. Welcome to the show. Like, you crushed it. Yeah. And I, I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, like, your excellence. And the director, Max Winkler, goes, so great, so great. We got it. We got it. But if we do it again, the seventh line. And Lee was like, the one that starts with, like, the pancakes. And I was like, the fuck? Is he a robot? And he goes, speed that one up a little. And then he goes, then you could slow down until you get to around like the 11th. You know what I mean? But then he goes like this. Yes, yes, yes. The water. I'm not making a joke. I thought they were doing a bit. It sounds like a bit. It was so technical that it was as if Lee Pace was a robot. It was code. And I honestly thought it was a joke to, you know, like sometimes you do like a really good take and you know, you crushed it. The other person knows you're in a two shot. You both had a great scene. And then the director goes like, you guys are going with that take. It's like the soft, mean joke, yeah. which I don't think is mean. It's fun. Yeah. So you just go like, yeah, I think we'll try that. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought they were doing that version of a joke. Yes. He did the note. Yeah. And it made it better. Wow. And I remember going like, I just, I'm not I'm not that. that. And I love that. And in mine, literally before the first take, Max goes like, you know, the lines are the lines. Do, do what you want to do. And I was like. Oh, you didn't say that to Lee because he's an actor. You say it to me because I'm this other thing. A performer? Who knows? I, but what's yes. confusing to me, Jay, yes. is that I think you're a... Ter- I'm not just saying Yes. I think you're terrific. Thanks, bud. I also want to give you a very specific terrific compliment about your terrificness is that, you know, I wrote my own show and, and I feel I'm like a, when I watch it, it... Oh, thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't of course. Know. When I watch it, it's probably just me, I hope, Yeah. but I can feel... Pete, the actor in the scene, and also Pete, kind of watching. Yeah, 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 totally. Like, yeah, same with me. So when I watch yes. things like I <laughs> gave Seth MacFarlane name drop, yeah. the same compliment that Orville, he doesn't seem to be involved except as an actor. He's he's just yeah, kind of in the scene, yeah. and that's what I want to say about oh, self reliance. And I don't know, you're. Let me it's can a, I jump in really fast because I have a funny. There's way. a compliment yeah, coming, but it's really specific to All what you right. just said. It's really specific. <laughs> So it's really funny you say you saw yourself watching. Yeah. Because and angry sometimes. Yeah. yeah I'm like, I, I'm mad that this uh, guy You're now he's not doing it right or this isn't happening right. Yeah. So as an actor, I'm always watching because I do I don't get competitive with my scene partner. Yeah. So if I'm in a scene with Vince Vaughn, I want that fucking guy to roll because I know we're both gonna win. If you're in a winner, you win. If you're, and this goes back to the Dell Close from the beginning, make your scene partners funny. Mm. So Max Greenfield, uh, uh, Schmidt from New Girl, I sent him an early cut and he was like, all right, man, I watched your fucking weirdo mushroom movie. He's like, good stuff. And then he goes, <laughs> he's like, he, it's a mushroom trip. Like you'd eat mushrooms and then you made this movie. <laughs> and then he goes, does not feel that way to me <laughs> either. Yeah. But what he said, which was really funny, he goes, you're really good in it. Besides when you're at the homeless guy and then you're just Jake as a fan watching your favorite actor in the world. And Biff I go Whiff? like, you're not wrong. Biff Whiff? Yes. That scene like with me and Maddie at the restaurant where we're first on the date and he's behind us. Yeah. Well, what was supposed to happen as written, we go in there. I go, I'm with her now. I'm good. And he goes like, okay. And goes to another table. Biff Whiff was crushing so hard that I go, you know what we're going to do? I'm the director. The beauty of directing is I get to make these choices. Put a chair in all of my shots and put Biff behind me. And Biff goes, what would you like me to do? And I go, just listen and react honestly. If you feel like eating, eating, just stay he in it. a lot. Yes. He chooses. I said, just be in it. So in the scenes when she goes, I go like, let's, you know, do this. And she goes, should we? Well, instinctually then as Jake, I just wanted to go to back to Biff because I liked him so much. So I'd go like, what do you think? Everything he's just doing, yeah. he's just reacting. Yeah. And all mine is just Jake being like, I love everything about this guy. But whenever yeah. I turn back to Anna, I'm back in the movie. Yeah. But yeah. whenever I'm looking at him, yes. the joy that fucking dude brought me. Yeah. It, that I was didn't... like, oh, he's so. And also, my tone of the movie was really weird. And as a director, you, as you're pitching it, you know it. You don't know it. Yeah. You pretend to know it. Yeah. 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 Then you start casting it and you're like, I hope I know it. 
Mm-hmm. When Biff Whiff got to set, I knew my tone. Stop saying Biff Whiff. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying that. I can't. And he Biff also said to me a bunch. He goes, "We're because we got close." We got, and he was like, "You know what? One of these days, you've earned it. I'm going to tell you my real name. Still haven't heard it." <laughs> and I still love Biff Whiff. But when what he if came, it's Walter? Oh, I'd be so happy. Everything about him. But when he came, I was like, "Now I know my movie." And I would tell other actors where yeah. they're like, you know, the family stuff. How intense should we play it? I'd be like, well, Biff's in it. And yeah. how Biff's playing it is right. So you're intense, but we're not gonna win awards for this movie. We're gonna this is our this is our own. We want people to laugh and go on the ride. Yeah. And I would think to him at times where I'd be like, I'm getting heavy, but Biff is gonna be in the next scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie in the opening credits is gonna have like Andy Samber, Chris Lloyd, and Kendrick. Yeah. Biff Whiff. So I'm like, this I, is what it is. When his name came on the screen, I was like. How do I know that? Because I, I watch uh, I Think You Should Leave. Yeah, Tim's the best. And for those of you who don't know who Biff Whiff is, he's the older guy. He plays Santa. Santa yes. Yeah. And and he always seems to be, if he's not improvising, then he's the greatest actor yes, in the agreed. world. And but I'm he's always sure right he's on the line. He's bring, So I hadn't, I hadn't seen Tim's show until after uh, the casting director recommended Biff. And so we did audition. Stop saying Biff. I can't. <laughs> Notice how many times I said tarantulas before? There are certain words that just are great. Biff whiff. Biff whiff. But I was seeing a bunch of old man homeless actor types. All of them played it the same way. Mm. They were all actors. It's a person without a home. It's heavy. It put a fucking hundred pound weight on my movie in a way where I'm like, I don't know what this movie is. Where they would be like, I'll shadow you. I was like, I hate this movie. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm making. Because I think it's funny and light, but these guys are doing this scene where they're like, you just started calling me, Walter. I was like, what an asshole Tommy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biff shows up with suspenders on, a fedora, the big beard, he's got his teeth in, and I go like, do those come on? He's like, yeah. I go, do you feel comfortable taking them out? He's like, I take them out every time I eat. And then I go, he starts doing his lines, and I was like, oh my God. Like, you got whiffed. You're, I got whiffed. He was the first person I got approved by MRC. I was like, before we go into casting, I said to them, I go like, we got to know if we're on the same page. P- picture. This is, I go, is he approved? And they were like, yes, of course. I was like, now we got a movie. <laughs> You're Without so him, right. I'm fucked. Because if it was a heavy performance or even an overly serious performance. Or medium. Yeah. If he's not Can a I great character. Can I also say about yeah. your movie, uh, I don't tip it. Well, no, I think I do. Huh. I watch movies like this. Yeah. The premise is set up for those of you that uh, it yeah. won't ruin it. No, a guy is inducted into a game. Yes, where he will be. He has to survive thirty days. Yes, hunters are chasing him. Yes, uh, we don't know anything about these hunters except yep. that they're deadly. And the the caveat is if you're with somebody because yeah. your character says, "Well, that'll traumatize my mother if exactly she watched right. me get killed." They say they won't kill you if you're with your mother. Yes, your character goes, "Well, that seems like a pretty big loophole." And Val and I, my wife. We loved every moment of it. I actually gave, speaking of my movie, I wrote down, the working title of my movie is Bliss, even though there's already a movie called Bliss. And I wrote down, I wrote myself an email and I wrote a version of Bliss where you get to the inciting thing faster. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. And that's another compliment I want to give your movie is like it gets to it fast. Real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you watch The Killer? The Killer, uh, possibly. I'm not great with uh, the titles. Fastbender? No. Oh, it's great. That movie, also, it, there's, right a new, there's a yeah. new trend yes. in movies where, again, speed it up. we speed it up. Well, I'll tell you why. Get, fi- get to the fun who fast. Who are we competing with? Everything that's fucking licking yes. your butthole. And, and, the, well, also videos that are really funny and fast. No, every that's show, what I mean. Every show that's ever been done. They're licking your butthole. Yeah. And guess what? You want to watch Self-Reliance or Gone with the Wind? <laughs> yeah. And if you haven't seen Sopranos, that's there too. Yeah. So if I give you a boring nine minutes where I'm taking my time. Yeah. I better ha- I better be Scorsese, yeah, or I better be somebody that you go. Although I'm willing to spend three hours because you're such a genius. Yeah, if you're not that, although you better dance. Your movie, again, another compliment earned. It could have gone slower because I love the fish eye or whatever yeah. you call that lens. Yeah, totally. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, Adam Silver, our DP, is incredible. Shut up. Sorry, you did it. <laughs> I didn't even like pretending to say shut up to you. I'm, I'm too, I'm, not I'm a little too I like sweet. It. I like it. Okay, I like good. It. I like the bite. I took a chance. I like the bite. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah, let's go. Let's make something together. Okay. Let's go on these goddamn Shut the fuck up. <laughs> now we're starting. Okay. 
But you do this yeah. thing with the lens. Is it the lens? Yes. Or, or it's, it's actually well, it's like it's it's in camera. Shift, so it's in camera. Wow. Yeah. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's meant to make you feel a little out of touch while you're watching every, you're a little it's bit very, in Tommy's head. Very similar to the thing that I'm working on is like, there needs to be two looks to this Fun. movie yes. before and after. And you did that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I haven't seen it done like that. It reminded me of Jesse James. Have you seen the sure. assassination? That, that's, they that use was those, our reference. Shut the 100%. fuck yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Because they do that fish eye. It, well, it's the same thing. It's the- Old the, lens. Yeah. And it's what it does is it blurs the outside yeah. and then little things come into focus, but the focus changes and you don't get to control it. Yeah. That's... So you shift it. So the magic of it kind of controls a little bit. Yeah. So you're in and out of reality. Yeah. But it's also reality. It's not too crazy. No. And it I, just I think fucks most... with your brain a little bit. Maybe I am complimenting my attention to detail, but I don't know if most people... You notice yeah. that the door frame at yeah. the beginning is arced. Yes. And you're like, why is it arced? Yeah. Oh, it's because it's a fisheye kind of yes. lens. So anyway, the the opening of the shot and your DP, what was his name? Adam Silver. Adam Silver? Yeah. Well, he did a great job. And Excellent. you could have gone slower. Yeah. And that opening, you're in bed and you're getting up. Yeah. And the light is coming. Yes. In. And I was like, what a nice shot. Yeah, totally. I just... Modern movies just... Yeah. They're not doing it. Yeah. They're not that that was sunlight or was it? Yeah, that was fire. It seemed like yeah. it was real it sunlight. Was. And I was like, It's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt real. Yeah. And I also appreciated little things like showing your morning routine yeah. over and over, although your phone should have been plugged in. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Well, Shut look. up. I am wrong. It's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. That was so stupid. Yeah. I regretted saying yeah. it immediately. Well, but here's I wanted you to know I watched your movie carefully. Well, I can tell, and I, yeah. I truly appreciate it. And you could have gone slower, and you do yeah. so many montages, yeah. Yeah. and they all work. Yeah. That at the end, uh, no spoiler, no. every relationship is earned. Yeah. And when you think, Thanks. why does he like Anna Kendrick? Well, we saw it. Yeah, that's That nice. scene where you're putting her up on your feet, I'm like... Well, that that was forty five minutes of movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like a little moment. A little moment. So, well so thank you, buddy. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you actually watching and knowing. For me, when you talk about when you watched yourself on the show and you saw where you were mad and you said where you were watching. Yeah. I just see on this where, in terms of what we were talking about earlier about T. Robbins, of uh, challenging yourself and learning. Yeah. I was underwater this whole movie. Really. So, in terms of learning and going, I would be like, I have an idea. I don't know how to do it. Even editing. When we first sat down to edit, I was like, "Like, I feel like I should know more than I fucking know at this point. Mm. And everything felt like a challenge. So all I see with this movie is I wish I could be starting it now because mm. now I feel like I know what to do with it. So like my third act, I, if I could do it again, I would. So we reshot a lot of stuff. We, we went to South by Southwest. And this goes back to like the grind and the gratitude. Uh, we made the movie for five million bucks. Uh, Paramount paid for it through MRC. So we had distribution through Paramount. We had an international deal they were setting up. The movie was going to recoup. So part of the business that a lot of people don't know is some of it's rigged to be fine. Yeah. So this one with this cast and this premise. And this cost. And this cost, we're going to be fine. Yeah. So there was no talk of festivals. There was no talk of any of it. Mm. So then I thought like, well, I want to go to a festival because I've done other indies that I haven't. And you miss that kind of spark. Mm. So they said, we're not submitting to Sundance. Spark experience? No. So I made a movie during the pandemic called Ride the Eagle, which was a movie we made for $250,000 in literally my backyard. Mm. And then when it went to the festivals, I thought, I don't want to go to the festivals because it's just a business expo. I think we could skip that and send it straight to buyers. Mm. And we did and we sold it, but it didn't have that... There was a group of people who saw it together and got excited and got a buyer excited. Yeah. So I was like, I, good, old, good old fashioned. I call that avatar when there's yeah. like a tribe of people yes. that unite around a tree. Yeah, but also good old fashioned sales. Yeah. If I come to your door and I say I have a great vacuum for you, you're a little bit afraid I'm going to come in. Mm -hmm. And you go like, I kind of want a vacuum, but I don't know if it's real. I don't know who this fucking guy is. His tie seems weird. His mm -hmm. vibes a little off. Mm -hmm. If you go to a place and there's a hundred people watching. And everybody's excited and people line up, you'll go, I'm lining up too. Nothing draws a crowd like a crowd. Del yeah. Close, last words. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Del stuff. It was all when he, well, in Are a way. Are you a big Del guy? I'm not a big Del yeah, guy. Yeah, because you're stand up. But I went to Chicago to do improv. Let's not forget what we're talking about. Yeah. But the reason I'm not a big Del yeah. guy is because he, and I love him and yeah, have yeah, full yeah. respect. When I got there, he had just passed. Yeah. So he became the symbol of you missed it. 
Totally. And I hated that feeling. Yeah. I just, totally. I resented everyone that was in the Dell Club yeah, and I was not in the totally. Dell Club. Same thing happened when I moved to New York. A lot of great stand up rooms had just closed. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And they were like, you missed it. And I'm like, a lot of my career was me showing up right after when it ended. And then I realized there were other things starting yeah. that became the things that ended when other people showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. That's something you figure out later. But everybody used to be like, well, Dell, yeah, yeah. if you didn't know him, you'll never know. And I'm like, a hundred percent. I'm saying this as Dale Close, eat shit. Yeah. Because what he was <laughs> yeah, teaching yeah, yeah. wasn't totally come sit by my feet. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it was here and now. It yeah. was like, let's get wild, let's get real, let's get excited. Yes. That's as a bit I feel the same way. I'm not trying to be weird. Yeah. Ramdas, one of my great teachers, yeah. he died and, and people are like, Oh, he's gone, he's gone. Yeah. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, this is yeah, literally yeah. the be here now guy. Yeah, totally. Here and now is as available as here and now that's will a, ever be. exactly right. So shut the fuck up. Same with Jesus, same yeah, with yeah. Bu Buddha, Muhammad. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What are you doing acting like whatever? Isn't it weird that the awareness that's looking out, pick your favorite person. Yeah. Their eyes is the same awareness that's looking out your eyes. It's right here. Yes, but here's the catch. Because mm. I'm always going to be this guy too. First of all, you're right. I'm feeling emotional. Yeah. Second of all, here's the catch. Can't wait. Grateful Dead. Wonderful thing that happened. And we missed it. So in 1994 or five, I had, I was dating an older woman. Nice. Thanks. It's cool. Lost my virginity to her. <laughs> no. Yeah, she was older. And she was wise. Yeah. Wise in the ways of the sheets. She showed me the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. She was older. She was cool. She was into the dead. Uh, <laughs> and she took me with like her older friends. We went to see a dead show. I saw Jerry Garcia. Oh, you State. saw it? Yeah. I was smoking joints and eating grilled cheese sandwiches in the parking lot. I was surrounded by the dead. I had a cousin who traveled with them for a while. So we knew people, we knew that end of that world. Mm. In the 90s, we had already missed it. But I tasted that thing with that original group and the old heads who you'd be like, that guy's like 65 years old. He's been traveling with us since he's 18. Cool. They all live in that van. Whatever. <laughs> right. And you saw it. Yeah. You, you yeah. smelled it. Right. Let's be honest. You smelled it. And I'll be honest. What was nice about it is when I was stoned and the weed got on top of me, I felt very safe. Mm. And I realized, oh, that's what this is partly about. A community to keep you safe. And you can trip out here. Trip sitters. And no one's going to fuck with you. Like, yeah. there might be one tweaker, but the group will weed them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they want this to feel like when you're high, we're all golden retrievers. We might have dreads, yeah. but we're golden retrievers. It's a safety net. It's a safety net. Yeah. Home wasn't right. Your life wasn't right. Society is not right. You are safe here in a pack. Wow. And while you're here... Listen to a song that should be four minutes that goes on for 25 and just goes like, and you're dancing. doesn't have to be good. Just go like this. No one's judging you. Yeah. It's all love, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was an edit 14 or 15, whatever age I was. I was like, well, this is a lot better than house of pain or whatever trash I was listening to. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was like, let me put down my other CDs and this might be it. Well, wow. long story short, that made me really have. I don't, I'm not a big FOMO person, Yeah. but I watched that, the Amazon Prime thing yes, on the dead. Me too. And I was like, yes, same. But even in the nineties, it was over. Yeah. So you would see the old guys and you'd go like, when you guys were young and so were they young, this must've been magic. Yeah. 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 Cut to 2021, a new version of it with John Mayer is going to doing tours and there's a new generation of people who will say, yeah, the dead is still going. It's the same thing. Yeah. And to me, I go, you're living in a world of spin. I get that you want to experience it. Yes. I get that the basis is there. This is a new thing and this is cool. Be psyched about this new thing. But it's not the same. But it's not the dead. John yeah. Mayer's your Garcia. And you could like Mayer, but then you go to those same people. Yeah. Uh, like, they're like, I love the dead. I've always loved the dead. It's like, we haven't always. You're 35. <laughs> and then they go like, well, I've always been. And I go, you go to John Mayer solo concerts, Bodies of Wonderland, you like that? They go, no, I'm not a Mayer guy. And I go, yes, you are. This is Mayer. This is Mayer. And yeah, he's yeah. fucking cool. And you like him. And they all like him. But you're going to a Mayer and Friends concert. Yeah. And they're doing covers of The Grateful, Grateful Dead. Dead. Yeah. And so for me, the only time that gets me annoyed, because I miss Dell, 
but my brother and I were improv guys growing up. You we, missed him. Like we, I had the like same I thing did. as you. Yeah. Always heard about him since I was a kid. Yeah. Always thought when I got old enough, I would study under him. Yep. The idea of Dell was so, he's the genius yep. and teaches you how to do it right. Yeah. And if you're not touched by it, you're always off. Yep. Well, the idea of now being like, there's a new guy and he is Dell. Well, it's not. Right. Just because you read his book doesn't make you, it's different. Right. And so I like the, I, that feeling but I don't ever want the spin or the happiness or what you want yeah. to pretend it's still happening. This episode is also brought to us by our friends at Armra. You guys know I'm always obsessed with ways to strengthen my immunity, as well as my gut health, as well as my fitness, endurance, metabolism, as well as hair and skin radiance. And I recently discovered one product that does all of that, and it couldn't be easier to take. I just add it to my smoothie. I don't even notice it, but it does so much. It's Armra Colostrum. Colostrum keeps coming up in conversations with my friends. What is it? It's the first nutrition we receive in life and contains all of the essential nutrients our bodies need to thrive. I'm talking about reactivating hair growth and glowing skin by reducing inflammation and puffiness in your face and neck, as well as stimulating stem cells to produce collagen and increase elasticity, so it makes you give, gives you that glow. I'm talking about your metabolism and fortifying gut health so you feel less bloated and lighter while replenishing your microbiome, stabilizing blood sugar, and accelerating fat burning, as well as fueling your fitness performance and your recovery, which I'm 44 now, that's so huge, and I've noticed the difference right away. So easy, Armour Colostrum is a proprietary concentrate of bovine colostrum that harnesses over 400 living bioactive nutrients that rebuild the barriers of your body and fuel cellular health for a host of research-backed health benefits. It's wholly natural, sustainable, and was developed with the highest integrity, grass-fed in the United States, and they guarantee the highest potency and bioavailability of any colostrum on the market for results that you can actually see and feel. I've been using it for months now, and I am sold. So we've worked out a special offer for weirdos. Receive 15% off your order by going to tryarmra.com slash weird, or enter weird for 15% off your first order. That's T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A dot com slash weird. Support your body, support the show. Also brought to us by our friends at Element, L-M-N-T. I was actually just talking to someone who takes it. They kept calling it L-M-N-T and I'm like, it's Element, but I get it. It's L-M-N-T, Element. Healthy hydration isn't just about drinking water, it's about water plus electrolytes, which makes sense. When you sweat, you lose both sodium and water and both need to be replaced to prevent muscle cramps, headaches, and energy dips. And every morning I get up and chug one big old glass of water with element in it and it Boom, wires me, dials me into my day, and gives my body what it needs. The solution to getting uh, through your workout isn't just drinking enough water, it's optimizing the water that you're drinking. Element has become a huge part of my wellness program. I drink it sometimes at night. I love the chocolate salt flavor. Uh, it's, it's a delicious way to get magnesium, potassium, and that sodium into your body for health, performance, and energy, giving you that boost. It gives me a wonderful boost. It also tastes amazing, and uh, the, I love the watermelon salt flavor, and I love the chocolate salt flavor if I'm drinking it hot, and gets me drinking that water and getting those nutrients and those minerals that I need. Element has come up with a fantastic offer for us. I just gave it to some friends who drink it after their workout, and they say it basically gets them like vibrating. They feel so good. Go to drinklmnt.com slash weird. Use promo code weird to get a free sample pack of all the flavors with any order when you order. And if Element doesn't exceed your expectations, they have a no questions asked refund policy. You don't even have to send it back. So support your body, support the show. Go to drinklmnt.com slash weird and get your free sample pack with any purchase. That's drinklmnt.com slash weird. All right, back to Jake. I, you know, it's very similar to our earlier conversation yeah. and it's another paradox, yes. meaning it's like have appreciation for what you have yes. and what you're doing, but also for the fun of it, yes. for the meaning making quality of it, acknowledge that it's not what it was. It's, and it's, to and it's different. Yeah. And what this is, you like. Yeah. But this, because also that scene now is not what the old thing but was. But it can't, if we're talking, if it's all relative. Yes. If if we can just be completely grateful as yes. if your movie wins an Oscar. I know yes. you're not going for yeah, Oscars. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, if we're doing that, it strips 
We need to have rules. Yeah, I we have we to, need to, but we have to have rules to our gratitude too. That's what I'm saying. Yes, I because there if, needs to be a clock on the game. There needs to be fouls. I totally agree. And then yeah. with that, because when I say that, I do have gratitude. I just think we've changed it to a world where I'm like, we're all fucking talking out of our asses. Like, well, I think you're. T- we have a similar disdain for. I'm not a affirmations yes. person. I think it's very weird to look in the mirror and say, I'm happy, yes. I'm happy, yes. I'm happy. I think it's much more powerful to get real yes. and be like, there's a lot of unhappiness here. You know what my wife taught me that changed my life? What? She goes, if I'm having a fuck day and I'm just you know, grumpy, pinch, yeah. traveling, yeah, yeah, yeah. just don't feel like yeah. myself. And she goes, in moments like that, God, it, it could make me cry. She just goes, and I think she learned it from our friend Mirror by Star, but it was like, or Tara Brock, maybe. Isn't it beautiful that I want to be better? Yeah. You start That's there. Nice. Yeah. You just go like, I'm judging, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm negative, I'm nasty. And there is another part of me going like, I, w- I the, would like to be better. I'd like this. to be yes. better. And instead of going, but I'm not, and it yes. sucks, I'm failing, you just go like, l- put your focus to the part of you that would like yes. to be better. That that really so is I, changing. You know what? I think we say v- uh, similar things in slightly different ways. And I agree with, I, I think we are going to come to the end of both saying you're right. Because- I really, and I know this is a weird thing to say, but I really like to lose as much as I like to win. Mm. And I think losing really matters. So some people say like with my movie, for example, so we, oh, anyhow, we get to South Self by Reliance South. here on Hulu. Yes. Here on Hulu. Well, this you- is Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Congrats. I like the Hulu thing where it goes. Yeah. Makes me feel like I'm hiding under a table at yes. a party I'm not invited to. And I can kind of hear the din of chatter. Interesting. So it has a druggy, dreamy. Yeah. Ba-boom. It's it's a mind fuck they're trying to do to get you into it. It's not Netflix. Ta-dum. Yeah. But <sighs> so similar. It is now similar. Now that you do both sounds, Hulu's there's one is... guy doing both of them. Boom, boom. Yeah. Ta-dum. Yeah. Hulu is but under the, the table. Outside, and, yeah. From an alien, it's the same thing. Very similar. It's we're saying the detail from the outside. How does this stream? It could be anything. It could start with Hulu. It could start with it no could. sound. Yeah. One goes dun dun, and the other one goes dun dun. They're <laughs> the same. But dun dun is yes. yes different. It that that it's has a like thing. you're fucking here, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> dun dun. Yeah. And Hulu is a little more. Boom, boom. Yeah. It's expansive. Well, it's also What's, smaller. It's I think mo- it knows. Yeah, it it's does. It's telling us with the sound. Well, of course it knows. Look Netflix at, look is at the like, numbers. I know. It's and the, the evil empire, and it says, yes, agreed. The sound says, look at our numbers. Yeah. The, it's billions and billions served on the McDonald's. Side. 100% right. That's, well, that's what that but sound Netflix is. Netflix knows what it is. And it's the right sound for what yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> what is the sound of Disney Plus, though? There is no sound. Cha-ching. Is- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> $40 for a churro, but you're pretending it's your childhood happiness. Cha-ching! Oh. I'm in the happiest place on earth, but everybody here is overweight eating churros for $1,000. Cha-ching! Who said that? There was some... This actually goes back to what you were saying about losing. Yeah. That they... I heard Alan de Botton, de Button say that he was quoting somebody else saying that there's nothing more... Uh, that There's nothing that creates more rage than the lie of Disneyland. Yeah. And it's because Disney really depresses me. I'm not a Disney adult. I am. I, I'm, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking yeah. about and I'm not that. Yeah. I can go and love it. Yeah. But if you go to the happiest place on earth and you don't feel it, yeah, it creates this rage well, as opposed to, and I, this but, is all pro but Disney, but I know, but it's all the same stuff because what they're selling is because the sign tells you it's the happiest place. You're spending money. You don't have, if it's the happiest place, fucking churros are free. You're in. We figured it's the hat. So you can't say the nice. happiest place and this family's working their ass off and all the kids want the same shit. And I know because of my kids. If someone's wearing those fucking ears, I want the ears. Well, those ears are costing you 80 hours of your job. This is not the happiest place. This is the biggest hustle on fucking earth. Can I say, go, t- yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Tying into what Alan de Botton was quoting is you go, it, that seems like a revelation you'd have on psychedelics right. where you're like, it's the happiest place yeah. on earth. But Why does utter, it cost yes. money? Why are there lies? Cause they're selling you a lie. And well, that, yes. so is reality, the, yes. the, the whole thing. But that's why I like losing. Yeah. And that's why I don't like gratitude because what is great about, but honestly, no, I love it because what is great. Like for example, when I made my movie and it was so hard, way harder than I thought. 
it beat me. I was balding. My body was falling apart. Really? I couldn't hold food down for a while. Oh. I'm like in between there and so I would like lay on my trailer floor and make videos to my brother. And I'd be like, another wonderful day. Like PT Johnson at it again. Like can barely walk. So tired. Absolutely hate it. Can't so wait tired. So beautiful. Tired. Wonderful. Wonderful. As good as it gets. <laughs> Why am I making this movie? <laughs> yeah, that's what I don't know. Every yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. You're and losing your mind. It ended. And a lot of people were doing the like, hey, dude, you did it. You won. You made a movie. And they're like, when are you going to feel happy? And I'm like, no, it's per, view this more like what it really is. And it's like MMA, right? So we all think in this business, you get to participate, right? So you're a professional fighter. You did jujitsu as a kid. You got into some striking. You wrestled in high school. What am I going to do for my life? I'm going to fight. Why? I love it. I don't fight because I want to smash people. I don't want to hurt people, but I love this art form. Yeah. Then you get signed by a big contract. You get a little bit of money. You wear the tight Reebok pants, and here you are. Mm. Now you're going to be on the main card at Madison Square Garden. You're not the fucking title shop, but you're here. Your whole family's coming. Everybody's proud. Look at you, man. You really did it. Well, you go in there, and the guy beats the living fuck out of you. Smashes your nose, cracks your jaw. You don't even get one good lipping. Afterwards, you're in the locker room. People are not saying, you won. You showed up. They're proud of you for trying, but you got your fucking ass kicked. They don't want to look at you. And and, they, and, and yeah. it's hard to look at you because yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our business is trying to create something of spinning every loss into a win because you tried. Yeah. I don't buy it. Yeah. When you lose, you lose. And it fucking hurts. And it should. Yeah. Because you lost. This is a part of the movie. But yeah, but agree. Feel your feelings. Feel the loss because it's okay. It's okay to go, that motherfucker is better than me. Yeah. And I'm I'm not done. Yeah. But you went on a fucking mountain and so did I. And you have so much gold. And it's not because everyone wants to say luck or bullshit. It's because you're better at looking for it. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is wake up and go, maybe I can get better. Yeah. And without feeling that loss, you then go, what am I going to wake up and do? I don't know. I might smoke a joint and get some fucking smoothie and look at this place. And when the waitress goes like, I really like new girl, go like, thanks. And feel really great and go like, bum, 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 bum. listen to some good music and go, wow, Moondog's cool. Yeah. How am I going to Griffith Park? Take a hike. Exercise is neat. I'll be home by the time my kids go to bed. Or I mean, by the time they come home from school and then I'm in their bed, I get to weird out on the internet. <laughs> right? Fun day. <laughs> Pass, man. Pass, man. Pass, man. At 9 a.m., get mad. Drink coffee. Figure it out until 3. Then do the rest. I I hear you yeah. so clearly. I'm going to do what I always do, but it's going to be very brief. Please. Richard Rohr, Father Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan, says that Christianity is a study on how to lose. Mm. And I think it's so funny. It's a story about a guy who realizes his oneness with God and then they murder him. <laughs> and we've turned it into prosperity gospel. Like if you if you yes. roll with this guy, nothing bad will happen to you and everything, don't worry, it's yeah. all for a reason and nothing more than you can handle. And I'm like, it is death and resurrection, yes. but the death is such a huge part yes. of it. And if you if you read the entirety of the Bible, there's so much just like ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, humanity and exact, and that's why it endures yes. actually. And what is unappealing and what makes my dick go inside my body yes. is just it's the, it's the well, Disney it's the, it's the and Disney you're like, of everything. Fucking yes. Get Fucking but I, your but, lips but, but, but modern, Like your character. Yeah, yes. Break but, your tooth. But modern spirituality for me to go there is going in one direction of saying like, we don't have to deal with the other half of this. And the other half of humanity is when we we're talking about you go off and you try to get that animal. Well, the animal is trying to live. Yeah. You don't always get it. Or it kills you. Or it kills you. Yeah. Or it fucking rams you and you go like, as you're being a fucking hotshot and telling everybody like, so the way you do it is blank. And then you roll down the hill because you twisted your ankle bad and they're like, now we got to carry his fat ass around or the group goes, or do we leave him? Yeah. And you're like, that is a huge part of this game yes. that it's just people want to brush that aside and go, it's about love and light and happiness and positivity. And Disney's the greatest place on earth. But do not look at that family where you know mom and dad are going like look at the, 80 bucks for the ears. And I'm not even, this isn't like a, a vegetarian yeah, yeah, agenda, yeah. but like you're eating a giant turkey right. leg and you're like, that turkey so is The hypocrisy happy. of everything drives me nuts. <laughs> and I have to, like people who will be like, They'll talk about what dog lovers they are, how their dog sleeps in bed with them. Because I'm a little grossed out by animals. So mm. I love animals, but like, I believe in farm animals, right? I have two dogs, but I can't believe they live in our house. <laughs> you I can't. couldn't be talking to a better person. <laughs> but I can't wrap my head around yeah. the fact that, and my wife and my kids, 
Those dogs are their siblings, and in the house, I'll never win this debate. Can I tell you a yes. line that I, I don't even like that I yes. say this, but we're in a safe yeah, place. Yeah. I say, I love my dog as much as I can love anything that's constantly shitting on my lawn. Agreed. There's so much shit Come, everywhere. And also, do you have a dog that if there's like a dead animal rubs their back on it for oh, the yeah. smells? And, and then drives, gets in the house? It drives me crazy because I see, and this is all projection, but I yeah, just yeah. see this wild, unregulated instinct yes. machine that's just like, blah, blah, like rubbing its face. If there was jizz on the ground, my dog would be like, blah, 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 blah. he'd yeah, yeah. love just yeah, the of DNA of, of it. Of course. And then it'd come in. Yeah. I'm also working on a joke right now where I go, you ever notice that houses that make you take your shoes off, they always have a dog. <laughs> like, great. who the yeah, yeah. fuck are you it, kidding? Yeah, in what world are you? Who are you yeah. kidding? But you know what I love? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But you know what I love? Outdoor cats. I love an outdoor cat. We have two outdoor cats. Uh, one of them, Peter. Self-reliant. Yes. If I it I'm, is. I would have said that if your movie was called Jack and the Bean Dick. <laughs> it was fucking, they're so, yeah. self I, I, I respect it. And I, I respect And I'm happy it. to pay for the food. And if something goes wrong You mean the there, rewards? Yes. But I'm also I'm also happy to pay for the vet where you go like, pizza asses and truck. We are cats named Peter. So, and he's he's a bad man. <laughs> he really is. He's one of the baddest human beings I've ever met on planet Earth. And when I'm alone with Pete... And I'm sitting outside looking at him. I've never pet him once in my life. <laughs> never once. That's why you guys understand each We've other. We've had him. Uh, we lived in Atwater Village probably 11 years ago. And uh, he and his sister were kittens under a truck. And my wife found him, brought him in our backyard. His sister was eaten by a coyote. There's been so many times where you'll like hear all the coyotes. And Aaron, my wife will be like, I'm going to put Peter in the shed. And she can never grab him. Yeah. Because he's, he's out there. He's moved with it. us three times. He's mixing it up. Because the coyotes. coyotes know his ass. And you don't fuck with Pete. I will say every once in a while, I'll see him. I'll be in my neighborhood. He's on some random roof. And I'll just, we'll make eye contact. And my thought will be like, God bless you, man. Do your thing. You're out here living. He's You're out here mixing living. mixing it up. He'll be gone at night. We live near in Pasadena. We have real animals out there. One day they're going to get him. And when they get him, I think I should figure out what I'm going to do in his honor when he dies. Something cool. This is like the island where he, uh, Leo tells the story about killing the shark and the shark goes, enjoy your dinner. Yeah. That's what yeah, Pete yeah. will say. Yeah, he'll yeah, grab yeah. them with his, he's dying and he yeah, goes, yeah. enjoy your dinner. I think that's right. That's and right. then he'll lay back. And then, or he'll fake he dying it. and then he'll get one in the eye. Of course. A little yeah. souvenir. Su souvenir. But I love an outdoor cat. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around that my dog's assholes aren't covered in my house. And they go on the couch and they walk around and their tail hits everything. It's just They filth. go outside. They're wet. They get on the couch. It's raining. Oh. And I'm like- Constant yeah, paw prints. Constant. And I go, I can't wrap my head around this. But- I also know as somebody in the tribe, and that's a family, it brings joy to everybody else. So I also have to know, shut the fuck up a we little bit. We are so similar on this. Yeah. I, I have to train myself to be like, look at the joy it gives yes. them. And that's good for me. It is. That's a type of losing I have I every day. Because I'm yeah. like, and I work on it. You know what? Yeah. I, I share this on the pod another time. I project so much. It goes back to what we were saying, actually, about like the dog is fed and he has a play, and, and but so I'd be fed and cared for if it lived in the back shed and was outside all day. Facts, which I would love if we if I had a farm, I would love my dogs so much. Just running around, work dogs. Scrapping. I think they're the greatest thing on planet Earth. Yeah, I did a Peace Corps thing when I was eighteen, and I was in uh, Costa Rica, and I did something really stupid. But they said if you're if Spanish is bad, be in a city because uh, there's English immersion. immersion. Oh. No, oh, like okay. no, like because you're supposed to be really good at Spanish before you go. Mm. If your Spanish is fluent you can go more rural because the program hasn't been there before. Mm. Well, I grew up outside of a city and my grandma, like my family was in the city. So I was in Chicago all the time. So did this program called uh, Amigos de las Americas. We're going to build the trains down there. And I thought like, what does that mean? Uh, Amigos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Could you translate that? Friends. Uh, <laughs> and I thought uh, I did my uh, setup thing and they said, how's your Spanish? And I said, fluent. And I said, and I didn't come to do this to be in a city in Costa Rica. So they said, oh, you, so you're looking for our more kind of rural, untapped things, meaning this program has never been there. Mm. So I'm going to have to be the one to explain to the t people in the village what we're doing. Yeah. And I, I said, yes, because I had checked all the like 10, 10, 10 in one direction, they didn't give me a partner. So I was dropped off in a village with no electricity. Uh, barely running water. This is a true story. Dirt floors, 
Uh, I was in a house that had uh, the ceiling just wasn't fully connected. Cockroaches everywhere. Cucarachas? Yeah. I, it, just like you would literally be like there, a cucaracha goes over, you just go like this. The first night I got there, they said, uh, uh, in honor of you, I think they said, I honestly couldn't understand. I'm very dyslexic. I'm so bad at other languages. You didn't speak Spanish fluently. This no, was a... no, no mucho español, pero solo un poco. Pero, pero no, uh, no, mm, no, mm, comprehendo. Ah, pero, no. pero you un, you speak more than you understand. Sí, no comprehendo. Pero puedo hablar un poco. Y fuiste un mentiroso. No entiendo. You were a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So their day one was your experience, and they no one knew what Amigos de las America was. No, I didn't have including a, you. You were like looking really it up didn't. in your I really dictionary. Didn't. Well, we didn't have phones day. at the time. Oh no. So I get to get to the dogs. I get dropped off there, and it's a world of trouble. Uh, it's a world of trouble. They are truly confused why a gringo's there. So I do my only survival technique, and a I huge sombrero. I assimilate. <laughs> I start taking off my shirt. Uh, I don't wear shoes because they don't wear shoes. I get it. I, the program at one point said, because when women would walk by, all the guys would sit on a porch. They'd go, <laughs> and the women there would go. <laughs> so it, it was a call and response. Well, they all knew each other. Oh, this is the same. There's not, a, there was eight houses. We should bring that to Manhattan where they're like, Hey, sweetie. Yeah. And they're like, I know, <laughs> yeah. check me out. Well, long story. I get, uh, I get reports back saying, uh, one of the women from Amigos was with some people, and the word is there's a gringo up on the hill who's shirtless, working with the guys, not doing anything to the program, and like whistling at women. So I went full, I just have to survive here. I'm just now in. Food was scarce because I had to ask for it. I would go, I was supposed to go to huts, find a family, ask if they wanted a latrine, and in response, I would get my dinner. You'd dig shitholes for I would dinner. dig shitholes for dinner, yes. I couldn't communicate the food, so I'd have to like climb trees and eat mangoes. Long story short, I was so lonely, there was a neighborhood dog that was you, so skinny. You climbed trees and ate mangoes? Yes, real talk. <laughs> I lost so much weight. I have photos of it. My mom said I was never the same person when I came back. She said, like, you were always weird. Now it was a different weird. But I had, there was a dog that I went with every day. It would be outside of the house I stayed at. I would wake up. It would be there. I would, whatever rice the family had left on it, I would give a little to the dog. This dude was my best. I was like, loved him. The greatest. I would take eight mile hikes to find a place. He was right with me. He was first. Every once in a he would bark. And I'm like, I'm sure you're scaring off a snake. I would have given that dog half my food. I would have done anything to protect it. My dog now... I look at this fat, lazy, suburban piece of shit, and I'm like, all you do is eat and watch TV and fucking bitch and moan, and you stink and cry. If if I'm uh, wrestling with my kids, the dog will be like, me? You're not a kid. You're a dog. You should be in the jungles of uh, Costa Rica with me, helping me. Partnership. This... We've only yeah. been having one conversation because we're talking about same thing, like a, yeah. a meaning of life and yes. like finding something to do. And I think both of us are projecting onto our dogs, perhaps rightfully, mm -hmm. just a sort of like, well, you just live at the spa. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck, fuck yeah. you. Well, and if, and I, I, I know no, we're yeah. talking to a part of ourselves. Yes. Because that would be the case because you're a grinder. We grind. We both grind. Rise and I mean, grind. Yeah, but look. From the outside, from what I know of you, you're a stand-up. Then you got an HBO show. Yeah. Nobody gets an HBO show. And you got an HBO show about house-sitting and stand-up. And now your show, you're with top stand-ups. You're at whatever that's called, the cellar, where you're sitting yeah. at like the good table there. You're filming at that table. Yeah. You got Artie Lang. So that is a rise and grind. Then, I don't know if that was the one with Judd, but I remember yeah. like Judd christened you. Yeah, that was right. Good, and yeah. then it was like, oh, you don't get that by being a fucking lazy dog sitting at home. You <laughs> My just, dog is never going to have a TV show with Jed But Apatow. you just don't. You get that by grinding. <laughs> yeah. And so there might be a part of you 
that just wants to sit, that gets mad at the dog. But I know there's a part of me that's really lazy and blah, blah, blah. But the majority of me yeah. is a fucking dog. Well, I think when we find ourselves behaving unkindly or, or I- even yeah. if it's just thoughts, yes. I, I'm very sweet to my dog. In fact, yeah, I yeah, overcorrect. Yeah. Yeah. This dog thinks I love him yeah. so much uh, because there's part of me that does. Yes. But like we, if we're being rough with somebody or a dog, I think we are just treating them how we treat that part of ourselves. Yeah. And we're getting a little glimpse. Did you see War of the Worlds with Tom T. Cruz? Who was he with in that one? Was that Emily Blunt? No. No, no. That, that's uh, War of the Worlds was Spielberg, I think. Okay. No, I didn't see that one. Anyway, there's a part where Tim Robbins yeah. <laughs> yeah, is best. in the movie. And uh, T. Cruz has to, it, who cares? I'm going to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. T- it's a great scene. It's yeah. it's T. Cruz and his daughter. I think it's Dakota Fanning, maybe. Yeah, it is. And Tim, Ro- it's somebody like that. And Tim Robbins is there, and they're all hiding from the aliens. And these aliens are like your cat. Yeah, Pete. they're fucking everything yeah, up. Yeah, There's yeah. no fighting the aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, we're gonna stay here, and we're gonna find a way to like hide and find other people. We're gonna like escape. And Tim Robbins has clearly lost his mind, and he's like, we're gonna make a plan. We're gonna go out there, and we're gonna fight these things. Fun. And then T. Cruz realizes. The only way out of this is I have to go in the back, right. his daughter's there, close the door, and murder Tim Robbins. <laughs> and Great dude, sequence. The, the amount, it is. And the amount that I relate to that, the parts of myself, when my wife in real life left me, right. I had to go in the back with a part of Pete that was like, this guy isn't working. Yeah, totally. isn't that terrifying? Yes, but it was That's so. Great. I like that a lot. I actually, yeah. when I say that, I'm not like sad that I had to yeah. kill that guy. I had to do that with my drinking too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been parts of me that I was like, "Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And totally. I closed the door from the yeah, sweeter, yeah, yeah. gentler parts of me, yes. my daughter. Yeah, hundred percent right. And I murder shit. So, uh, so, <laughs> th- but by the way, this is how we totally relate. So, when I said earlier, I compartmentalize. Yeah. So, with my wife and kids. There is a part of me that is really sweet and really different. Yeah. Now they'll see a little bit of the other guy when I'm pushing them to do homework. Yeah. Like, you know, when I'm saying to them, like, I do expect more for you because I want to put a little but it's dog selective. in it. But, it's I, but I also, I want them to have the dog. If they move out of my house and their thought, because my mom raised me to be tough. Yeah. She raised us that like the world is a bad place mm. and the world is scary. Mm. And as many people are trying to help you, which there are, there's people trying to take from you. And I feel like a lot of people want to just believe that the world isn't so bad yeah. and the world is really great. And that is true. But this is a fucking living nightmare. It's both. It's it's both. both. Good and is it, only defined by bad. Uh, yeah. Yes. But if you don't think about the other, it's not great. Yeah. When I think about work. So like I'm really balancing at home of like, cause I'll do the same things. I'll have big talks with Jake in the back where you're like, ease up my guy. That was too much, fat boy. Chill. Hey, it's a lot of drinking when everyone's in, like, and for me, it's really weed. <laughs> Stop it. Because I'll go like, was... well, I did yoga after I smoked weed. And I'm like, well, it's also Wednesday and you're alone. <laughs> and by doing yoga, you went in your garage and you watched some like lady teach yoga and you kind of did the moves. <laughs> <laughs> and then the music got louder than her talk. So essentially you watched a lady do yoga <laughs> while you got high. <laughs> a two dimensional yeah. lady. My man, that's not yoga. Yeah, that was your, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, and so my talk to myself is then, why are we doing this? And the answer always comes, I'm bored. Mm. Why? Because I don't, if you you need money to pay your bills, you work, you grind. And so I then get back to the thing of, I haven't done anything in this game. I haven't started. The race is happening. I got two fucking bum knees and two ankles, but I got to figure out a way to finish. I'm fucking broke. Mm. Uh, I got so much I've wanted to say and I haven't said it. And time's ticking. I'm not going to be on this rock forever. And at any second, I'm going to get kicked off the carousel and I'm going to look back and go, I had my dream and I didn't fucking scrap for it. Mm. And I'm going to go, because once it's over, and there's going to be a moment when the town just moves too far away from you. Mm. You see so many actors you love that all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what happened to them? Mm. It just it's it just went a little bit away. Mm. I cannot look at myself if I'm old and sick and getting into the drug phase and saying like pump that. Mm. One of the thoughts can't be, well, you didn't work that hard when you literally were living your dream. Yeah, it's like, well, what's the no? Now I did understand when my kids were born, there was a big change. Going on locations changed, the priorities changed. Being a dad to them 
became number one. Yeah. But you're not a dad 24 seven. Yeah. Grow the fuck up. There's yeah, times yeah. where you can work. Yeah. And the times are from eight really when at three, when they're done, but then they're just watching screens or doing like whatever they're doing until about five thirty six. Mm. So from eight until five, I can work as if you need it to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once it's over, try to switch out of it without weed or a drink. Mm. Like I don't want to then be like, all right, it's over. It was stressful. It was intense. I need one cocktail and then I could be a dad because I did that for a while. That's mm. dog shit. Mm. So then you're like, no, just fucking snap into place. Mm. And then the only person when I'm in that like happy Disney version of mine I like is I go, I don't like the dog. Mm. And I'm not going to be nice to it. I'm never going to hit the dog. But like, but I'll this, be like, this is my family. I love my family. I love this. And then I'll hear like, and I'll be like, you're on the outside looking in, pal. <laughs> And I know you don't speak English and I know you can't understand me and I will pet you when I get in Yeah, and I'll make sure you're fed and you'll go to a vet and I'll fucking pay someone to walk you a few times a week. You're going to have a privileged life, but that doesn't mean I have to like you. That's Well, it goes back to your thing about losing Yes, and feeling your feelings Yes, and being honest about your feelings. Uh, Growing up religious, I learned to like pave over so many feelings and just look nice and seem happy. Yeah. And even worse, converted. Like yeah. you've figured it out. <laughs> like yes, that's like, right. Totally. Hello. Yes. <laughs> yes. But going off of that, and this is the era that I hate so much about right now. Everybody's always talking about how it used to be really bad, but now it's great. And everybody goes, if you met me before, I was in a really shitty place and now I put it together. And the reality is you haven't. Mm. The reality is you're still in a really shitty place. You're just in a better place. But for some reason, everybody is now over the hill of bad and into the valley of goodness and into the valley of virtue and everything is going great, but you should have seen the dark days. So I'm going to lead you here with me where the reality is it's dark everywhere, mm. shitty everywhere. It's also great everywhere. Mm. So you are well, we not, have to be honest about, you both. have to be honest. Yeah. So the only people who say it's great everywhere, they always then say, now pay this. Yeah. So I, <laughs> this is perfect. I'm going to lead you. This is your fee. Once that fee comes, you go, that's why you're saying it's great, because that's what I'm paying for. Mm. You're paying for Tony Robbins to tell you that remaining 15%. Mm. You're paying for someone to give you their happiness to lead you to it. But the truth is, they're in the shit just like you. Yeah. I'm I'm like you. I like uh, goals and focusing yeah. on good things and asking what I want and how I want to feel yeah. and, and, and getting the balance right and all of that. And I'm also... Sometimes I get really overwhelmed with just how fragile we are. Like yeah. I took it as a foregone conclusion that you would show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a miracle that Katie. Yeah, you're totally a hundred percent right. You know, we're we're dandelions yes, in the cracks of so the sidewalk. I can't think of that because that gets overwhelming. Yeah. With all the people you love, you know, you're like I'm like no no no. What I can think about is my dog's assholes annoying. Well, you just said it right. I think would rather be angry than upset or, and, yes. and afraid. Yeah. But I do think that's interesting. Yeah. Yes. So go, so when I was 15, my, uh, I dropped out of school for a year and right around that time, my aunt who was homeless in LA wanted to be an actress, had some mental problems. Uh, my mother had, cause she got cancer. My mother moved her in with us. So she died in our home and my mother said it was too much for her. So she said like something you could do while you're around is keep Lucy company. So at the time, even though I was told she is going to die, we are past chemo. Mm. There is no light at the end of this tunnel. She said, I'm going to die. I believed this is our relationship forever. You're really sick in bed. I bring you popsicles. We talk. You tell me about what you're feeling. We go for walks. You explain how your brain shifts and that's why you fall. And I was like, neat. You explain what it's like to start deteriorating. I explain what it's like to like start living my life. And we have this great thing. And when she died, I was shocked. Really? Shocked. Because you weren't looking at it. Because that part of our existence, well, if you, I mean- if It's you, overwhelming. It's insane. Yeah. But what I did get from that goes to this idea of wanting to be a dog and work. This shit does not last forever. And right. that's a guarantee. Yeah. And there is going to be a moment for all of us, either fast and sudden, or hopefully the things start to fall apart. And you go, well, I'm an old car, and now this doesn't work, now that doesn't work, now I lay down most of the time, <laughs> now I have a drip, 
Now I'm connected. My dad used to say before he died, he would go, my life used to be so big. Now it's so small mm. and it gets smaller and smaller. And I'm like, oh, that's what would make sense. Mm. But right now it's still pretty big. Cause mm. he would always say, he'd go like, you're in such a great period. Mm. He's like, you know, he used to run a car dealership and he'd be like, looking back, it was so fun. I got like a big deal. We got like taxis. And he's like, I had fucking shitty Chevy on every fucking cab. It was the best. And I'm like, we'd be talking and I would forget because it'd be over the phone. He's about 130 pounds now and sick in bed. And when we hang up, he's just waiting for the next call. Mm. But there was a time he got the fucking taxi deal. Yeah. And I'm like, so if you don't get the taxi deal, let it kill you. Yeah. I'm like, because this is the fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the ups and downs, the roller coaster. If it's all up, it's not fun. Yeah. If everything is great, I have so much gratitude. How's everything? That goes back to my buddy, Eric. The maid was in the hotel room. We were standing outside. He goes, this is perfect. <laughs> no, it isn't. In 30 minutes when we're drinking these Japanese beers and eating these chips that we just got from like the Japanese market, the game's on, this will be perfect. Yeah. Right now, it's a bad moment. <laughs> and if we don't acknowledge this, then when you say that's perfect, I don't trust you. Well, in the, you know, I'm a spiritual person. They call that the love and lighters. You keep saying that, but there's a term for it. Right. Which is what? Love and lighters. Love and lighters. The, the people that are all love and light, all, all love and light. Right. And you see this a lot in cults. Do yes. you watch? Uh, I love cult stuff. Love is One or whatever it was on HBO. On the Net, most on recent Netflix. one, I haven't seen it yet, no. Well, you know, spoiler alert, it's the same as all of yes. them. It starts there, and then this shadow that is on... Yeah. Because you're saying, I can't see the darkness. Yeah, so and you... then it sneaks up on you. It doesn't have to sneak, it just walks up. Right. It just opens the front door. But that goes back to your movie, is that like the feeling, it captured the feeling of like, I'll tell you this, yeah, to yeah. tell you that. There was a, I live in Ojai, and there was, a, there was an earthquake and it, it wasn't big. Yeah. It was the biggest one I've ever been in. But it, And my sweet little daughter yeah, ran yeah. to me and we went outside. And it, it was actually kind of a fond memory. Yeah. Because I got to feel like a dad. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And hold yeah, her yeah. tight and all that. And then later that same day, we went and saw, I've told this before, so I'll tell it quickly. We went and saw Shrek the Musical, a little Fun. local production of Shrek the Musical. Fun. Four o'clock. But the earthquake had happened at like 11 a.m. So there's still aftershocks. So we're in the play. And it was, it was great. Uh, you know, there were parts that were funny because it's kids. But it was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was unironically enjoying it and ironically enjoying it both. And every once in a while, there'd be an aftershock and everyone would be like, ah, yeah, and yeah. the people on stage would be like, ah. and I was like, and I, this isn't a dark thought to me. Um, it's, that's life. Yeah. Is we're putting on a play. Totally. And every once in a while, there's an earthquake. And it gets really scary. And John Mayer quote, we're slow dancing in a burning house, yeah. is, is another way to put it. But I think the way out of that isn't around it. Right. It's through it. Totally. And let let the earthquake inform, and it did. Yeah, I remember that play. The ties of adrenaline and yeah. that sort of stuff to memory, and like all these. That's why we have a hard time forgetting traumatic things. But like, we've said this a million times on the pod. But ice cream wouldn't be delicious if we lived forever. Yeah, that's and if it totally wasn't right. kind of bad for you. Yeah, like we like that. Agreed. And I, 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 I'm totally with it. It's interesting when we talk about death, though. So you watched your mom. Your mom died. No, 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 my aunt. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You said okay. your aunt, your dad died, though. Yes. And you've seen some of this. I just want to put this to you. Kind of getting into the spiritual part, if we want. Um, this Thomas Merton quote. I can't. He was a Trappist monk and a brilliant man. He had this thing where he goes, and this is shadow. My favorite mystics talk yeah. hard about the shadow. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not love and lighters. And they go like, we all die alone. That's where he starts. Yes. He goes, we die alone. Totally. And this, this always gives me a chill. He goes, you can pull everyone you love into your bed with you, but it's still you yeah. going on the toboggan. Yeah. And then he goes, paradoxically, the salve to that anxiety isn't denial. It's to explore what is it that you call alone. Like, it's another way of saying that spiritual thing is, who am I or right. what am I really? So you go deeper. You don't stay up here and go like, oh, I'm Jake. I made yeah, a movie. Yeah, yeah. I was on the new girl. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff is we know. Right. That's that, Im that image in the movie where he looks out the window and there's the cowboy yes. with the gun. That's us. Yes. Even when I get up to pee in the night, I'm thinking like, whoa, yes. we're so fragile. So there's no escaping it. But that going through that fear and into the question, who am I and what am I really? 
is the only way to, to go, what do you mean by alone? And you but, go but, so, so deep my, into your my, lonely. My uh, rebuttal to that is yes. Um, I didn't really finish yeah. the point. Please jump in. And it's going to be new agey and that's going to yeah, wind yeah, yeah, you up yeah, even yeah. more. Good. But when you get into the I yes. that says I am alone, yes. what we mean by the I, which is your consciousness, which is your awareness, which yeah. is being itself, and you get curious about the nature of that being, you recognize that it can't be alone. It's the same everything as everything. Right. So it's the opposite of alone. Yeah. You could call that union with God, one with the universe, whatever it yeah. is. But isn't it funny that the answer, or as I said earlier, the salve to existential loneliness is actually go deep, as deep as you can into it yeah. and explore that spacious void right. and go like, this isn't a void. This is... But see, I think that's a spin. Tell me. Um, I, yeah, I think that's a great way of looking at dying alone. But when you die and you see the person go from living to not living, it's they're there and then they're just a body sack. Body sack. And it happens fast and it's grim. And with my aunt, you know, we had, we changed her clothes. So I like pulled the arm through and the person on her dead body. Yeah. So like she died and then my mom, you know, didn't want her in those clothes. She was just freaking out. And so my other aunt and I like had to take her clothes off and put a different outfit on her. And the person that an hour ago was there and part of this oneness of all of us. Yeah. This was like, if you ever see like a dead animal, you go like a it's butcher shop. Yeah, yeah. You're like, the chicken might is. be part of the oneness, but it's also just, you know, you go to a Chinese restaurant, you see ducks hanging that just look like ducks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, whatever. It becomes an object. Whatever the thing was, is it's gone. And so this idea of oneness, possibly. And when I was raised, I was named after an uncle who passed away. And the idea was my soul, that my body would be a place for his soul to be. And we all believed it. And it was all really nice and good. Hmm. And my mother believes she's connected. It's kind of a burden though. Uh, it it wasn't in my oh. family. It was more just like, you know, he died at 26 on a motorcycle. It happened too fast. Everybody loved Mark. So I was Mark. Mm. Uh, it didn't feel like a burden. felt more like fun. When my uncles are drunk, they get to go like, we love you, Mark. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you love Jake too? <laughs> <laughs> and they did. So I'm like, win-win. Uh, Double love. Yeah. But then it started feeling like the point of like, I was like, well, this is fun to believe in. Mm. This makes my mom feel good. This makes me feel good. But is this shit real? Hmm. When you're on that actual deathbed and the darkness is coming, I guarantee it feels better to say, I've spent my time, I've gone so deep. I believe in a oneness to all of this. Hmm. That's a wonderful way to choose to live your life, but it is a choice because maybe, or maybe, it, or just blackness. And I'll give an example because my dad and I used to have these big talks like this. Hmm. So my dad was, he left when I was two, or was kicked out at two. Don't really know the backstory, but he was a. He was kicked out. Uh, most likely. I'm just kidding. But or he left. I was. Yeah. But, I was pretending like yeah. I was there. Um, <laughs> yeah, trust me. Yeah. He was. Yes. Yeah. But he was a drugs and alcohol guy. Mm. And then when I was 17, he sobered up. And then when I was about 25, we became friends. And I lived with him when my career bottomed out in my late 20s, and we would just have these. We were both insomniacs. So we would have these without mics mm. and just get into it and let it rip. Mm. And any perspective, you know, oh, we could try, try, try. And then he finally said one day, he's like, let's make a deal. And this is when I was 26, 27. He goes, he goes, when I die, let's do something together. I want to be cremated. You're going to have some of my ashes. And he goes, I want you to break into Wrigley Field and put my ashes on the right side of home plate. Scatter them in and take Like them. in the batter's box? Like, if he, like as if he was a right-handed hitter. Mm. My dad loved the Cubs. He was the biggest Chicago sports fan I've ever met in my lifetime. It's 100. They really meant a lot to him. We bonded over it. Wow. That was how we kind of connected. And he goes, you do that. Then take a second. If there's any way that I could reach out to you, say I love you, feel you, I will do it then. And I, he goes, if I fucking die, I'll wait. If they'll say, hey, Croco, here's heaven. I'll fucking wait. He goes, we'll make this happen. My dad, because he didn't raise me, always felt bad, would run through a burning building to not go against his word. Mm. Years go by. I get on New Girl. I meet the owner of the Cubs. Things are happening. I go to my dad when he was alive. I'm like, I think I'm going to be able to pull this off, buddy. 
He's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus Christ. This is unbelievable. I can't believe this is big, big. I go, you know, I'm singing the seventh inning stretch. Bring him up there with me. He's like, I can't believe we're in fucking Wrigley. I go, I think when you You're die. saying take me out to the bucket? Yes. He's like, I can't believe it's going to happen. I was like, it's going to happen. Uh, he passes away. My brother and I have the ashes at his house. We know it's going to happen. I reach out to the Cubs PR. Or they reach out to me about something, about throwing out a first pitch. And I say, absolutely. I take the ashes. They're in my pocket. My dad's nickname was Croco. Croco. His, uh, where he lived was 425. That was his address. And he used to call his house the 425 Club. So I wore in the jersey. You put your last name. I put Croco in 425. It was all to him. I get out there. I put a little bit of him on the uh, pitcher's mound. Wait, they're calling you out for the pitch? Yeah. And you're like, one second. Nope. You open a vial? I, I do one of these. It's in my pocket. I go like this. Go in the mound. Drop it like this. Well, you did it on the mound? Yes. And then... Well, I, you're supposed to do it on the batter's box. Story hasn't finished. All right. I'm glad because you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> I throw the first pitch. I go shake hands with the catcher guy, whatever. Take the photo. I then walk on my own to home plate. Take some in my hand. Put it on the right side. Smear it in as if I'm a big fan, just touching the dirt. I go like this. I stop. I look up. I take a whole beat. Nothing. Then, during the uh, national anthem, uh, there's two guys who do it playing the saxophone. My dad's apartment in the 80s was very 80s, single, guy who probably does too much cocaine. A lot of the artwork was like ladies playing the saxophone. <laughs> With no clothes on and silhouettes behind, like, you know, like shades. My or on a mirror. Yes. <laughs> it was just trash. My brother and I start dying laughing. Tears streaming down our faces. And we were like, this could be. And then I went, this is the spin. I didn't feel him. The spin is he came through the saxophones. Right. The oneness of everything to me is the spin. The story feels better. Yeah. That he did tell me he loved me. Yeah. But the reality is when I was on the field and I waited, the thing that we said, he couldn't do because he wasn't there. Right. And to me, that's- Because like, he wasn't there. You sounded like yeah. Albert Brooks. Yeah. Because he, he wasn't, wasn't there. Because he's dead, Because he's dead, all right? Because when it's over, Pete, it's, it's over. over. We're sex as shit. But you're here now, kiddo. Good to see you. Good luck with the radio show. You're a wonderful <laughs> man. But now it's time for me to go. Where's my car? <laughs> <laughs> but to me that was that to me is my spirit like that meant a lot to me yeah even that he wasn't there yeah because i'm like yes yeah great it doesn't make me any less happy about living or optimistic or but i'm like right yeah. and i'll tell my kids i'll create some fun for them to do it and i'll say i'll try my hardest and yeah. if you want to spin it spin it yeah but if you feel it it's real that's great too right but for me, I didn't feel it. And the saxophone, my brother kept going like, because I was bawling. Mm. And he's like, this is it, man. This is dad. And in the moment, to like make the moment better, I went like, absolutely. But I'm like, no. no. <laughs> we knew what we said. It wasn't, you know what I'll do? I'll have two guys play the fucking saxophone. I'll go like, too far of a spin, my guy. <laughs> If he had, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, if he did, it would be perfect. You see, I don't really put too much stock in in that. Like, even yeah. if you were like, and the saxophone's name was Crocko. Crocko, yes. I, I, I don't really care. Yeah. There was a time in my life that I loved miracle stories yes. or things like that. And I'm not bullshitting you. Yeah. I'll just say and see yeah, how you yeah, respond. Yeah, I'm more yeah, interested yeah. in how you respond. The awareness that your dad was yes. is looking out your eyes right now. The awareness that my dad was is looking at... What does that mean? There's only one awareness. Yeah. You and your dad are as connected yeah. as anything. Agreed. Meaning your dad was a wave. He yes. took the apparent image of Krakow. Yes. The wave crest sizzled onto the beach, got pulled back. He's fucking gone. Yes. But the water, oh, totally, the water yes. is still there. Agreed. So when I tell my daughter... yeah. There's nowhere you can go that I'm not with you. Totally agree. I mean agree. that a hundred percent literally. And I will not be telling her when I die, where would I want my ashes? I don't yeah. know. It's the comedy star. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. Don't you curse me. Cut, don't curse me. Cut him saying it's no. It's a scary place. <laughs> it's a scary place. Just say comedy store and cut there and we got him now. That's where we're burying him. <laughs> Maybe Largo. <laughs> but 
I, I, I yeah. It's not to disc, uh, discredit your. I love the no, experiment. No, 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 yeah, yeah. But your dad, when Ramana Maharshi, this great Indian saint, died, that his he had cancer or something, yeah. and and his followers were like, "Don't die, like heal yourself. Yes. You're like this miraculous guy." And he goes, "Where could I go?" Right. It's yeah. this is all the yeah, 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 all yeah, the yeah. biggest truths sound so stupid, right? But there's no time, there's no space, no. and there's no separation. It's just this, yes. And that, even that is saying too much. Yes. So your dad, we can honor that he's gone, yes. and be like, "Where could he go?" Right. Where is this nothing that we're talking about? Yes. But here's the other side. He's also gone. And he, I, yes. I would say he. Okay, so the Zen, yes. uh, the I believe it's Chinese Zen. They say death is like a vase, yeah, and the air in the vase, and then you break the vase, and the air that was in the vase goes into the air. Yeah, it's gone. the The vase right. vase, yes, the vase is, vase is so much nicer. I know. And you said <laughs> ant, which I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> I also say ant. Um, the The vase yeah. is gone. Yeah, it's another paradox. Yeah, your dad's gone. Yes. And he was never here. Here, I'd, yes. I'll go even a little harsher because you love the harsh. Yes, an illusion that. cannot die. Right. But so then Disney, this whole but thing then is, Disney like, is the happiest place on earth. I agree. I'm about to pitch them something, so I agree. Right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But, so, but that idea, like, but that is significant because it's two ways of looking what at it. What do you mean by that? So he is not gone because we are all everything and we are all here at the same time. And that is wonderful. And you'll never leave and I'll never leave. And everyone who's ever been here has ever been here. And we're all part of the same thing. Well, the other thing is my dad and I during football games would text and FaceTime and talk the whole time and laugh our asses off. Well, that's gone. So I could say, well, I feel him. He's here and he's still here. Sure. But he's also not in that, but also I think it's both. Ends. Yes. I I'm so with you. you. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Keep going. But I'm okay with the thing of he's gone because he died. And when he was here, we've, it was great. Dude, we've yes. only been having one conversation. It's yes. Del Close. It is. It's the same stuff. He's self. gone. Yes. And John Mayer is not Jerry Garcia. Yes. But this is great too. But it's also yes. great. So a buddy of mine said about his dad had died, my buddy Clay Allen. And when my dad died, I was really sad and broken up. And he goes, here's what's hard. You and your dad, your relationship was a book and the chapters were being written. And he goes, there's no more new chapters being written. Mm. That book is done. And he goes, but the relationship isn't over. It's just now one sided. Mm. And I didn't get it at the time. I went like, yeah, but I want the chapters to keep going. Yeah. But what's ended up happening is things will happen that I'll know he'll love. Like the podcast. He would love how much I'm turning this into a business. He would love how the numbers You're out there with the yeah. Cadillacs. But he would love it. Yeah, no, of course. And he, he would, would go like, she'll explain because what I love about it is the business of it is I love the direct to consumer. I love the idea of fuck, if this audience continues to grow at the pace it's growing, I might do an indie movie and try to release it direct to an audience from a website mm. and cut everybody else out. Mm. And go, if there's enough, tell let's do a poll. How yeah. much do you think this money, this movie should be rented for? I think you could do entire shows direct to audience. Yeah. And I'm like, but before you used to have to wait for them to tell you how it was doing. Yeah. So they would break down their reports and you would go like, how are we doing? And they would go like, we'll schedule the call in nine days. Yeah. And I'd go, well, I made the fucking thing. Yeah. I would like to know exactly how it's going. This is a direct thing. So the actual piece of art, my dad didn't care about. The thought behind the business. So I will do moves that I will think, oh. He would fucking love this story. And it feels good, yeah. but I don't get to tell him. So it's a new way of telling it. It's still sweet, yeah. but it would have been so fucking good if he were alive to hear this. He would love it. And then I could hear about the fucking dealership. We could have two hours. Mm. And he would go like, this was so fun. And I'd go, I agree. And then I'll go, but I got to hang up because I'm in the driveway now. Bye. And he'll go, bye. Call me later. Later. Bye. And we'd hang up. And I'd be like, it was the best. That's uh, gone. Yes. And to say it is, but it isn't because we're one thing to me is finding positivity where it's a fucking huge net loss and it's a fucking kick in the dick. Yeah. And you go like, it sucks. Yeah. And maybe when one day I'll die, I'll see that fucker. And we'll go like the John Prine son, when John Prine son, when I die, I'm going to get to heaven, we'll start a rock and roll band, mm. smoke a cigarette. That's three miles long, have a vodka and fucking seven up. See all my, I'm like wonderful image. Yeah, but the reality is that John Prine is gone now, and it's so sad because I'd love to hear more music. Yeah, and it is the same, 
but it's how you like to look at those sameness. And yeah, for yeah. me, even though I hate the feeling of it, I love going like, I don't love, but I like going, I just miss him and yep. he's not here. Yep. And I, if he was, it took me a while to finally delete his contact in my phone because he was a top five best friend. Yeah. To go like, wow. well, I don't get to call him. Right. He's the only fucker who wants to hear about this. Yeah. Everybody else goes, yeah, another uh, yeah, business thing. Yeah. And they're like, boring. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you. He loved it. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought yeah. a piece of your dad. I really, I was like eating it. Yeah, fine. I loved it. Yeah. What a gift you gave me. Thank you. And all of us, I hope. I'm with you. I'm actually, this whole conversation is about paradoxes, about both and the whole yes. thing. We've been talking about both yes. and. I just want, for fun, my optimism is actually incredibly bleak. In right. fact, when I'm afraid I'm going to die, yeah. say I'm on a turbulent airplane, I say an illusion cannot die. So what I'm comforting myself with yes. is I never existed. Meaning right. Pete is an apparent a momentary abstraction right. of the oneness that kind of to experience itself and play with itself. We're playing a game. You right. be yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I'll be me. We're vibing. I yeah, love yeah, this. Yeah. This is so fun. Really? Yes. So this kind of like the inf the infinite can't know the finite. Yes. So it creates the finite and then it places itself in the finite as a character so it can experience it. Yes. Cause oneness can't experience two-ness. So That's it right. creates this whole thing, but it's not real. But it was all but a dream. It was a dream. Yes. This is God's dream. Yes. And you and I are thoughts in God's mind. So it's good news, bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Jake, you're not real. That's yeah. great. <laughs> and it sucks. Because you're not real. That's right. And Jake's missing his dad yeah. is real. Right. A dream has relative reality. Right. A hallucination has yeah. relative reality. You can be tripping balls and say, there's no giant trying yeah, to yeah, eat yeah, me. Yeah. But relatively, there is. So it's all both and, and anyone who's trying to tell you it's not, yeah. it's just this and it's not that. Yes. There's so much mourning. A lot of my spiritual practices is coming to terms with my fear right. and my anger and my despair. It's not just going like, I'm just the oh, air totally. in the vase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. But you have to get really honest and fierce. It is like going into a cave with a torch. Yeah. I, I forget which mystic said it, but he's like, there's like Jesus or whoever you, you got leads you up the mountain. And then they go, that's the peak. And when you go up, he doesn't come with you. And you're not there. Yeah. And Jesus isn't there. And God isn't there. But but there's a there's something, but you can't even talk about it. But it, it's it's a heartbreak. They say enlightenment is the ego's final disappointment. Right. Good news, bad news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but an illusion yeah. cannot die is only... Yeah. I mean, I flatter myself thinking that that's comforting. Yes. But it is to you. Because that's is. how you're choosing to do this game. That's right. And I'm so, saying I'm a wave and I'll just go back in the ocean. And, and, but that makes you feel better. That's right. And so for me... We what, have to own both. But you also, you have to own what works for you. What works for me is I don't think we're that different than a chimp. And so I don't want a chimp being like in a tribe being like, this other chimp is, it really taught me a lot. That's my healer. That's my this. This person has led me down this train of thought. These other chimps really get it, but that chimps don't get it. That group over there, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we all are going to come. We're on this rock. This is what it is. This is pretty great. Yeah. And then it's pretty terrible. And you're right, like a dandelion, it could go fast and life can turn like this. You get one call from a doctor yeah. and you're like, man, this fucking dream turned into a nightmare. Right. But- it is all that same thing and it ends really quick. Yeah. And so for me, it's not a dream. It is fiercely real. And if I'm on a plane and I have that moment where it goes like this, I think like, fuck, my kids are still too young. Yeah. Like it's just, I'm not like, no, but it's both. Yeah. I have that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want, it's called spiritual bypass. Yeah. What we're talking about is your dad dies yes. and you go, but he's just the air in the vase. Yes. I would say, Jake, you're spiritual bypassing. Right. You're not feeling it. And Val, my, my wife, I know I've said that a million times, but Val is the one that always just goes, put your hand on your yes. chest. Where is that grief? Yes. Can you let it get bigger? Feel it. Go towards yes. it. Yes. And that is the the uh, the exact core of what the movie's supposed to be about. Don't talk. We've got to go. Self-reliance on Hulu, <laughs> January 12th. This is Hulu. <laughs> yeah, January, here. On, here on yes. Hulu. And take Ta Alpha Brain. <laughs> and Magic Mind. And that's for you, yes, Modern fun. Mammals. That's actually a great shampoo. We have similar hair. Huh. I love it. <laughs>
You'll love it. <laughs> do you not wash your hair? I mean, I use, yeah. You can't wash it, right? I can wash it. What do you, you mean? You do wash it. Yeah. Your hair doesn't look like shit if you wash it? Shampoo I don't it? give it too much thought. I just, I go oh, to really? CVS, I get shampoo, and I put it in. And it doesn't look like shit? It looks pretty good. Thanks. Could look <laughs> way better. Could look better. Yes. JK. I regret bringing an ad into this, but what were we saying? Uh, the core of the movie is yeah. that. Yeah. And so in terms of just telling the story, it's feel things in your life so you can get over the girl. Because I don't want to make a comedy where it's about all this other stuff. Yeah. So it's, I got dumped, I'm in a low spot and I'm trying to do this. And everybody's basically saying you have to feel. And what the point of that is, and the reason it took this big game to get there is you could die. No, I know. And it's got you. And then oh, the holy, the whole arc of his character is not that he's going to knock on the door and she's going to answer it and they're going to be happy. Yeah. She might say, you're a fucking weirdo and I don't know what's real or not. And you're not for me. And his stomach is going to go like, Oh, or she's kind of a weirdo. She lied yeah, about or being... she's going to be in. Yeah. But whatever it is, he's excited to knock on that door and feel what happens. Cause all there is, is right now yeah. it's really happening. And if you lose and you're that fucking fighter, well, Put ice on your wounds. Yeah. But don't say... I don't hurt. It, or for me, the thing where it's like, or yeah, how it happened. I won by doing it. And I'm as much as the winner as the winner because we're all the same thing. And we're all... No, he's the winner. Why? Because he fucking kicked my ass. Why? Because he was better at me than at this weird thing right now. Yeah. Or I, because I got in my head, the bright lights hit me. As I was walking up, I saw... Shia LaBeouf and I got thrown. <laughs> I went to stand up and Lance Bass was and in the Lance front row Bass. and I was like, Ugh. and then I had a bad show <laughs> and it's not a dream. It's reality. And why did it throw me? I don't know. <laughs> but I spent the whole fucking time thinking I did a one thing with me, Max and Lamorne and Ben Affleck was on the stage in the, in the watching. It was one. I was terrible. Yeah. And afterwards I thought like, that's a net loss. And they're like, Oh, it's fine. I'm like, we weren't good. The entire time I just thought like, Here's Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah. And I can pretend not to be a fan, but I'm a fan. He's he great. Afflected you. <laughs> he changed my he, whole he headspace. You. He changed. Well, he afflected you. We're the same age. Goodwill Hunting was such a, a Ch shift. For I me. agree. I'm from Boston. Oh, interesting. So yes. I saw Ben Affleck in Harvard Square after that movie came out. Interesting. And I loved it so much. Yeah. I worked so, at a movie theater. I I cut scenes from the film. From the trailer, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You this is this it. is my version of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you do? You did something similar. Like, like it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I had frames from the movie, Amazing. and I showed it to him in my wallet, and he he initialed them. He no way. It. He was so sweet. What was the project that got you, or the person that got you wanting to do this game? Do this? Yeah, the whole thing. Like, uh, what was, was the thing that you were like? Oh, I love that. It's a great question. I think. One of the answers is Goodwill Hunting. One of the answers is the book Sign Language, yeah. Jerry Seinfeld's book. He loved it. Because it was clean and I was religious. Right. And I was like, and I didn't know. You said, I could do that. There, there was, uh, I'll go darker. Yeah. I can do this and mother won't disapprove. Right. Like real fucking yeah, Freudian yeah. stuff. But now I, my mom hates my comedy and I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> you know what I mean? What an yeah. achievement. <laughs> what is. an arc. Imagine if I was still going on stage and being like, yeah. soap. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. I love I love that my mom is like, Petey, sweetie, why do you have to talk she about such this? things? Because I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. You fucking look at it. <laughs> or I just go, don't watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, it's 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 a point of strife in my life. But yeah. if you were watching my movie, I'd be yeah, yeah. so proud of my character. Yeah, I, yeah, I know maybe yeah, that's yeah, weird yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, it's nice. But the Pete that was going, it was a little Machiavelli Machiavellian. Yeah. yeah where I was re reading sign language and I was like, this is my way into the pirate life. Right. While getting the approval that yeah, I yeah, still yeah. need. Interesting. Because I can't do it without my Neat. parents thinking I'm okay. Yeah. Now I can. Yes. But it took sign language by Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> That's really cool, Isn't man. Funny? I was reading portions of it to her and she was laughing. I was like, I got it. Yeah. We're yeah, in yeah. business. We can win here. And then I did that for like seven years and then my wife left me and then I got funny. <laughs> Because I was like, that was my, yeah. this is, what are we talking about? What is this? This is ending. This yeah. is, it's this all is on, insane. It's on fire. Yes. So what am I doing this for this other person for? Yeah, totally. Why am I letting this character loom so large? I don't even like this. Exactly. Yeah. And it feel, that, that's why, like, forgive me, this is one of my yeah. passionate talking points, but I'm like, I do feel, honestly, and maybe you feel this way as a filmmaker, that I could do something. I sometimes joke about doing a comedy special called, Is This What You Wanted? Yes. 
and I just do yeah. an hour of what I think people want. Totally. And I, I, I don't think I'm flattering myself. Yeah. I've been doing stand-up for over 20 yeah. years. I think I could do an hour of material that would be broadly, yes. widely accepted. I think you should. So, but the you reason, think I should? Yes, I can. It's death to me. So I, so I, that goes. That's like being in church again. In, well, so mine's different. So uh, I've had a, I had a really big realization in this process of this movie, and going back to the why, why we're doing it all, and I fundamentally feel as if audiences have gotten forgotten, and I fundamentally feel like we as performers have made it all about us and our process and what we want oh, and our journey. You mean Han shot first? What's that? George Lucas yeah. recuts the Star Wars movies because it's about him, and it's like it's not. Oh, interesting. It's for the fans. Yes, and so, Han but, shot first. Yes, but I, I, I fully feel like we have all, we've gotten so into in between our own years and this town, and the celebration of this town and our awards and our credit and who's cool and what studio is cool yeah. and what critics like you and if a critic likes you, you're cool and if certain cool people like it, and it's good. That means you're good. But if these people don't like it, that means you're bad. And if this person says you're funny, then you're funny. But if that person laughs, maybe you're not funny. Mm. And if that person goes, dude, you're a filmmaker, great. Or if they go, yeah, I like that little thing. Maybe it means something different. Mm. And I've been so wrapped up into this bullshit and I realized in doing this, if we are anything, you go to New Orleans, you're walking down, you see like eight kids dancing in, uh, for money, mm. and you stop sometimes and you go like, Jesus Christ, these fucking kids can go. Yeah. And you're drunk and you throw some money in and they go, and you're like, great. And you look and you're like, these guys are making real money. And then you walk down a little bit and there's somebody else who's not as great. Someone's playing the saxophone and you look at their case and you go like, not as much money. And I'm like, we've forgotten. That's what we are. Mm. I don't view us as fucking teachers. I don't view us as guiding people to anything. I view us as we give people a break and we entertain. And I I'm that. like, and I love thinking like that. I love what you yes. just said. I won't forget that. Yeah. I feel like every podcast, there's like one or two things. And I'm like, I'll, I'll remember that in 10 years. And I think that was it. But I'm going to counter Please. by saying, here's when I, if I did the special, is this what you want? Yes. I would be doing an impression of other people. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, I thought Meaning, you meant what? So here's what the difference. I, I thought you meant I'm doing what- I'm always trying to do yes, something that meant, will blow them away. Yeah, I thought you meant doing what you love, but you know they're going to love it too. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I am Never captain. Mind. Oh, you mean- I cut yeah, yeah. precious yeah, bits. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. My favorites. But I'm going to tell you I something that, wrong, yeah. that I- No, no, no. Yeah. I, I'm glad we circled back. But Conan, <laughs> name drop, told me he was like- what he thinks of show business is a room with 10, 100,000 people playing instruments. Yeah. And some people are putting down their saxophone and picking up a keyboard. And then they, now they're playing the blue man droop, gr gr uh, blue man yeah. droop drums. And he's like, all I did was I banged my triangle. Right. And he's like, I just did that for 10 years. And then finally someone went, what is that? What is that noise? I've been hearing yeah, that for yeah, 10 yeah. years. That's more my approach. Meaning, Interesting. I think more fans or whatever, meaning, for its own sake, a broader appeal is coming for me. That's a goal of mine, but it will come from banging my yes, triangle. Yes, agreed. I'm I'm waiting for someone to go like, oh, th this guy Pete's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's but, what, but it's that's the same thing of the street performer. That dancer, the one you give them the money, it's because they're doing exactly what's working for them. Yeah. But they're entertaining the fuck out of you. Yeah. So it's you. You see when so, both. you see when someone's doing something that you're like. Oh, that's purely you. Yep. But I feel like what the the big thing that I've forgotten about, or at least not thought about as actively as I am now, is at home I'm a relationship with my wife and my kids. That's my real life. At work, I am in a relationship with the audience and they matter. As opposed to I'm in a relationship with my creative self. I hear you. And I have to do what I want to do and what I've been dreaming to do. And if I do that, you will come. Yeah. And to go, well, they're here right now. Yeah. And this group has supported me since New Girl has started. And I appreciate it. So rather than me just go, well, where I'm at here, there's a thought that I'm having of like, well, where are we at? Yeah. Where is the thing that really works for me that really works for you? And I'm like, and that feels like a really fun game in terms of like with the podcast. Yeah. You have a direct link. Yeah. And you're like, oh, like we were doing a lot of like sex stuff that was really making me laugh. And we started feeling like people were going down and comments were like, it's a lot. Like, be like, I'm a mom. I'm literally doing uh, dishes uh, while my kids are sleeping. A lot of orgy talk. Yeah. And then we would like. You took the note. Sure. Yeah. But then look, they don't go away. Yeah. But we're like, literally we're talking to producer Kevin and we're like, maybe we'll do a little less like that. And he goes, yeah, I kind of agree. It's getting a lot. Then all of a sudden you start feeling a change and you go, oh, this thing is alive. 
and we're doing it together. And I think that thing is alive with everything mm. until it's not. Yeah. Like now my movie is not alive. Now it belongs to the audience. Mm. But I'm like, oh, this idea why I said at the beginning, like, I wish I could start it now. I've now seen it with enough people. I've heard enough stuff. I now know what I think it's about and what the majority of people think it's about. Yeah. So I'm like, now I'm ready to start making it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. ah, but fuck, you're, but you're it's done. over. <laughs> I started laughing while you were talking. I love everything. I'm going to play this clip. Do you mind? No. It's from New Girl. It's you. Hmm. And it fucking killed me, dude. And I've never done this on the show. But my, Val loves New Girl. Uh, it's not that I don't like New yeah, Girl, yeah, but no. she loves New Girl. I appreciate that. And she sent me this clip of you pretending to be stoned. And I just want to play it for you. My wife sends me a lot of videos. Leela, <laughs> Leela ice skating. Okay, here it is. Dude, I'm going to preface this by saying she sent it to me because this is me when I'm stoned. My, when she does an impression of me when I'm stoned, I go like this. I go, I go, ask me anything. Because I think I know so everything. <laughs> I'm so high, I go, ask me anything. I'm willing to go. I know anything. <laughs> and you're kind of that way in this. You're not an expert. I am. Nobody knows we're stoned. We didn't go, then they would know. You're saying that if we don't go to the party, they're going to think that we're high. Oh, the guy who's never done weed. It's not the proper term. It's smoked weed. You don't do weed. That's a You said it. <laughs> Listen to me. First order of business, we eat their food. Okay. Then you look at the pool. Oh, what a great pool. I wish. I wish I could die for rings. Because if you were stoned, you wouldn't die for rings. Um, I was just thinking of this impression. Who am I doing? Who am I doing? Al Pacino? Maybe. So then you get home, you eat some pizza. Trust me. I just thought of every single possibility. <laughs> it's over. That is me. <laughs> you going amazing. like this, going, who am I doing? <laughs> who is this? So, do you remember that? No. That was just Damon and I improvising in cross coverage, goofing around. That is yeah. so <laughs> funny. Is that what you're like when you're stoned? Uh, no, 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 that, so Damon and I are old. We did a movie together. We did, we became very close. So we know how to make the other, he's one of those people. When I was talking about Vince Vaughn, Damon Waynes Jr. is one of the funniest people I've ever been around. Mm. One of my favorite humans on planet earth. Mm. And when we would do scenes, we would cross cover it and we'd, or, or be in a two shot. That and, means two cameras at the same time. And so everything that's happening is real. So it's live. So they, when they edit it, they can just put a whole take in. Going yeah. back to like yeah. making someone's performance. Yeah, and the that's game, not happening. No, the game that he and I would always play. Trying to make him break. One of, or he would try to make me, and we know how to do it. So he would know like, what is oh. That? Who is it? <laughs> You're trying to make him I'm laugh. I'm just going to his sense of humor of like, this is, I know I can get Damon on this, and whatever I have to say, I will sell out for Damon. And going back to the audience bit, my whole game, and it's why, going back to the Del Close, why I miss too. It was make your partner funny, do the scene, this and that. And so my whole thing is I want to make the scene partner laugh and I want to make this real. And I've realized, man, I should be thinking about the audience too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I've missed that. I win on a day like that. If afterwards when they called cut, Damon does like his big laugh and goes like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And we're cracking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I thought, I forgot about it because yeah. I felt like it's over, I won. Yeah. And I'm trying to do that recently of like, Yes, I want the scene partner to laugh, but like, imagine if all the energy was thinking about when somebody watches it at home alone. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I don't, I know it seems like a goofy thing to keep saying. It's really significant in my head. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I've abandoned them for years. I get it. Yeah. I, you're, you're catching me yeah. just at the right time. I'm am, thinking yeah. about that money in the New Orleans right guitar case yes interesting <laughs> it's so important it's so but you've got to be they you've got to be doing what you do yeah yeah yeah. because you see the people who fake it yeah you'll that's, be that's like you're I'm really saying. talented but like i'm yeah. not putting money in your guitar playing yeah, yeah yeah i'm not into you i always say it's like a bad date when yes. someone's doing an impression of what they think a date should yes, be totally right. totally wrong that's right but the good date is is like it's just magic yeah it's like and, and you're being real yes not to be weird it's kind of like this like yes. i'm not trying same 100 percent you know, and it's like my dinner with Andre. Yes, you know? like totally. why is that movie so captivating? Yes. It's because you remember what like two people. I'm Wallace being real. and you're Andre. If we're doing the comp, I'm Andre. 
I'm wild. Andre the Giant. Inconceivable. This was incredible. <laughs> Wait, he was in a movie with Andre the Giant? Yes, of course he was. And then he was in. I, yeah, do you're you think right. at any point, real talk, On set, he did, said, eh, it's my dinner with Andre the Giant. And I bet Billy Crystal did and oh. everybody else did. And Wallace Shawn, who's pretty serious, was probably like, yes, that was a different project that I did. <laughs> But this is this own project. Humorless. Yes. That was a different film. Yes. Well, that was a serious film, and this is you guys clowning around with prosthetics. And me and Andre don't have prosthetics. My impression? <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Are you okay? My impression of Andre the Giant is him seeing some fans yes. notice him. <laughs> and he goes, do you guys want to say bonjour? <laughs> Do you guys pretty want good. to say bonjour? Yeah, pretty good. It's okay. Yeah. But it's uh, fun to I do. I just saw a thing on Instagram it's about him that he <laughs> once drank 130 beers at one sitting. Mm. And once on a plane, he went to the bathroom and it smelled so bad that people were like having like a crazy reaction to it. And they almost landed the plane early. <laughs> <laughs> he it's messed worth, with air traffic. Yeah, but like enough so that they most, and look. Could this be another lie? Possibly. I believe it to be real. Yeah. But the he went to the bathroom. It smelled so bad that it became a thing on the plane, and most likely he had to go like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I really have to go. I should not have had the fish. <laughs> or the 50 fish. Because he did, he would eat. I mean, he drank 131 beers in a sitting. Yeah. That's, you could Google that. I know another one where they were he was getting surgery for yes. one of his various wrestling things, and they said... We're going to give you anesthesia. Can yeah. you imagine being the anesthesiologist oh, for Andre so the Giant? Much. They said, how much can you drink uh, before you start, before you get drunk? And I think he said something like- 30 bottles of wine. 30 beers, I yes. start to feel yeah. it. Well, he would do a thing, you saw, I saw, because I used to be obsessed with Andre the Giant. Yeah. Loved Andre the I Giant. I wish that doc was better. I don't know Me why. Me too, but it was still fun. It was fun, yeah. but I wanted I it to just be this. This yeah. is so uh, yeah, fun, and it wasn't somehow. But photos of him with a bottle of wine where it just looks like this. Yeah. And the fact that he would drink like nine of them. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why that makes me so happy. Baldy slam. <laughs> That's him saying it to Hulk Hogan yes. when his back was hurt, yeah. but he, he gave him with the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was great. Yes. Really fun. Nice to meet you. Self, nice to meet you. Self-reliance is on this platform, Hulu. Yeah. Dun -dun. And you should watch it. We watched it. We loved it. Thank you. And Katie watched it, and she said she's still thinking about it, which mm, is a great that's compliment. Fair. That's fair. Oh, no, no, no. She loved it. And it stayed with her, ah, is the compliment. Uh -huh. Yeah, it stayed with me as well. Um, the last question we ask everybody, we have all these, yeah. but we've done enough, man. Yeah. We've done it. I feel it. We're done. Uh, can you tell me the time in your life you laughed the hardest or one of the times you laughed harder than you've ever laughed? Yeah, my... Uh, <laughs> just, just quickly. Well, I don't... I mean, it's a lot. It's my brother and I. Yeah. So my brother and I have been doing bits since we were kids. We used to do characters around the house we created, we like sketch was everything for us growing up. And he and I could commit to characters for months on end. So the, what's the hardest I've laughed. It's been some game that we've done that like every voicemail we leave each other, every time we call, yes. it's an ongoing bit. We've been talking about how we're currently writing a sketch show together that we started in the eighties. It's called the greatest sketch show ever written. Uh, there's so many layers to the bit. We've never written a half page. We'll never start. Every project is he's like, so maybe we should do a podcast. And we're like, I go, well, if we want to take over the entire fucking market. And he's like, I guess I'm ready for it. It's, it's going to be a hundred hours without any edits called still chatting. <laughs> We'll never start any of them, but we'll get into ribs for every once in a while. It'll be just the right moment. And I'll be like, something will happen and he'll go. I'll get the call and I'll go, hey, and he'll go, new idea for still chatting. <laughs> Hour 30, and I'll just be like, and he'll talk for like, because hey, he's my brother. He won't be respectful and pause. So it'll be like six straight minutes and then he'll finish and he'll go like, I got to go. And it'll hang up. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, you just made this drive home Reminds amazing. Me of your dad. Yeah, 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 totally. I'm in the driveway. I gotta go. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, great fun. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. You say keep it crispy. It's the. It's just. It's how we have a sense of closure. The guest says keep it crispy. Keep it crispy. Can you say it as your character on New Girl? Keep it crispy. <laughs> Can you say it as your character in Safety Not Guaranteed? Keep it crispy. Can you say it as your character in Self Reliance? Keep it crispy. Can you say it as yourself? Keep it crispy. This is me realizing you're not an actor. Keep it crispy. <laughs> now, here's how I'd say it on the podcast Keep it crispy. Best keep it crispy ever. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>